total of eight rounds of breaks tonight. So here are all the folks in the first round here. Break Y. Hello, everybody. Um, I see that we are gaining some folks here, so we're going to get started right away. It's a sold-out break. All eight rounds are sold out. Uh, break Y is the first one that's up right there. Adam, how's it going? Robert, welcome to the break. Joe iPhone is here. He says, we will be seeing a lot of SP and SSP cards. I hope so. Mux says it's going down. LE is here. Jordan is here. Patrick is here. Patrick wants the Nats to win. So let's get started here. Here's our first hanger case. Um, actually, in the hanger case, you get these come in little groups of eight, and they're all, all sealed up. You can see that. Pretty awesome. You can find these at your local Walmart or Target. I think the Target ones have exclusive um, cards in it. I, I'm pretty sure they have exclusive cards. I think they have um, the ones from Target have Shohei Otani cards, I do believe. But you can see there's two perennial all-star insert cards inside here. And there's 15 boxes per round. So let's get started. I'm going to just open probably most of these from the bottom because the cards sit in these big packs at the bottom of each of these boxes. Um, it's probably just the easiest way to get to it. The Walgreens ones have exclusive yellow parallels. All right, here we go. First one for the folks in Break Wild. I'll try to keep your name on the screen. Dante, how's it going, man? Just was talking about you the other day with uh, Victor. Said that uh, you are in there all the time. So there it is. There's our pack. You can see no relic. J&W, how's it going, man? Vladi Yellow is a $250 card. That's pretty awesome. One giant pack inside here. All right, so our first big fat pack. Uh, John says, how's your Clemente rookie card search going? Well, it's kind of stalled out right now. I've been pretty busy with uh, everything going on. Cameron, how's it going, man? There's Moustakis, Keston Hira. Nice one right there. Big hits are in the middle, says Joe iPhone. So Nick Senzel, we're going to see a lot of those ones. Justice Sheffield, what's up? There's Michael Chavis, Gonzalez, Sky Bolt. Got to love how they flip these around. Even in the big retail packs, they flip them around on us. Yeah, I saw Girardi is um, going to be managing the Phillies. That's pretty awesome. couple Super Chats popping up. Ralphie Swidinitz says, Nothing, but he gives a $5 donation. Ralphie, I really appreciate that. Make sure you guys check out Ralphie's channel. And TJCC says, good luck, everybody. Still trying to reach 200 subs. Let's uh, help out TJCC, guys. And also, Ellie says, time to pull some fire. Eric. Let's go. Ellie, really appreciate that. Make sure you check out Ellie, home of the Rookie Rated Box. And here's the hits in the middle. We have, man, they keep switching all over the place on me. Perennial All-Stars, Tony Gwynn. There's two of these in every box. Burt Bly, 11. I'm hoping to find at least a couple autographs out of these. There's Pete Alonso. How many hits are we calling? 618. That's a good question. Um, let's see here. I'm going to say that we're going to end up pulling. Let's see. We're opening 120 boxes. I'm going to say eight. Does that sound right? Eight hits, maybe? We'll see. Pete Alonso. Wilson Contreras, George Springer, Vogelback, Roark, Real Muto. One hit per nine boxes, says Joshua. Real Muto, J.D. Hammer. Ellie wants 10 hits. Gold are one and two. Pete Alonso, and that's the first box done. Box number two. I don't, I almost, I'm out of force of habit. I'm almost like trying to rip it open there. I don't know, that, that bottom was kind of hard for me to open the last time. We'll see if I can get it this time. Wes says, good luck, everyone. Get those autos. Thank you very much, Wes. I hope you guys will take a minute and check out Wes's channel. Really appreciate the support. I am not watching the World Series right now. I think I'll be able to watch the end of it. Usually the uh, World Series usually ends around like midnight, it seems. So this break is um, less than half of what the previous rounds of Top's Update were. So I'm thinking that we will... Hopefully be able to watch the end of the World Series around midnight. And then Kevin says, curious to see if there's more short prints, super short prints, flip stocks, etc. Yeah, we'll see. I really appreciate that. 
box number two, there's a Jimenez, Kevin Biggio. Then there's Pete Alonso. Just got to love how they do this. I'll have to flip it back over again in a second. Independence Day is 1 and 43, says Joe iPhone. And Ralphie says, is a game on now? <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah, I think a game might have just started. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Gold. That's a nice one right there. Vladdy Jr. Gold for our Blue Jays owner, Eben. Home Run Derby rookie card. And Ryan says, just got my Patreon package and pulled a Tom Glavin rookie. That's awesome, man. And it also got a Josh Donaldson. Uh, speaking of Patreon packages, I sent out a whole bunch today. It was five garbage bags filled up and a, a big box filled up with stuff. Um, they actually, the, um, the mailman, the clerk, gave me a push cart to take out to my car because I had so much. I should have taken a picture of it for all of you. So I would say almost all of it is out. The $4, the $7 one, and uh, the higher level ones I'm going to send tomorrow. I've been trying to find some specific extras for the higher level ones. Next box. Box number three. I really struggle with opening these up. It's probably actually easier for me to go from the top. But then it's so hard to get to the cards because they're at the bottom. It's got to be an easier way. You can tell I don't really open a lot of hanger packs. There's Luke Weaver on the front. Chat Town says, hello all, let's see them big hits. Dante, we stopped in the store. It, it was in the... Uh, we did a video from there. I think I uploaded it on Sunday. So he definitely was talking about you for a little bit. I don't think I included that in the video, though. All right, next pack, number three. We're going to be seeing a ton of that Alonso. We've already pulled, like, three Alonsos. Not yet, Adam. They're still in a box out in my garage. Probably won't get to it, honestly, until I have a break from school, like um, Thanksgiving break or Christmas break. It's because it's so busy. There's Yasmani Grandal, gold. Paul Goldschmidt, 1984. It's a nice one right there. Mariana Rivera, short print. Very, very nice. Short print Rivera for the Yankees. I think this card goes for about, I want to say, 8 to 10 bucks on eBay. I, I actually saw that one. I wanted to pick one up for myself. It's like, wow, that's a pretty sweet looking card. Oda Rizzi. Bregman, who likes to carry his bat the whole way to first base. That was really awkward. Anyone see that last night? Alex Bregman hit a home run, and instead of dropping the bat and running to first base, he ended up carrying the bat the whole way to first base. And then he tried to hand it to the first base coach, and it was really awkward because the first base coach didn't really want to take it because that's not really his, his job. So he ended up just dropping it like right around the first base area. And then um, Soto saw that, and then when Soto came up, he blasted a home run and did the exact same thing, except when he did it, instead of awkwardly dropping it, he just kind of like held it out and did kind of like a, a pretty cool bat drop right around the first base area. And Wes with the donation says, get your one touch ready. I can feel it. Wes, I hope we have a nice big hit in here. Thank you very much for your support. Make sure you guys check out Wes's channel. And Ralphie says, I can't find the game. What channel, please? Ralphie, it's always on Fox. Um, it's pretty much, um, it's always been on Fox ever since I can remember, back even in the, the 90s. Appreciate it, Ralphie. All right, so let's see. Rookie autos are one in 20 hanger boxes, so we have a good chance of finding probably like six of those. And then there's a Jan Gomes who's playing. I don't know if he is he playing right now. I don't know if he's in the starting lineup or not. Sky Bolt 150, Manny Machado, Garrett Hampson, perennial all stars, Aaron Judge, and Al Kaline. And then the rest of our base. Uh, Simon says, Get a few one touches ready. I can feel it. I hope you're right. We're going to have a couple more breaks coming up on the horizon. We have Panini Flawless on the way. Flawless is that briefcase product. 
It's pretty high end. So that will be coming up. I think that actually got pushed back. We were supposed to have that tonight, and they pushed it back to next week. So that is why we're doing these tonight. Actually, these are from my personal collection. I've been buying up cases of Tufts Update, and I, I bought a bunch of hanger cases. Um, if I told you how many I bought, you probably wouldn't believe me. So I was like, you know what? Let's just break some of these hangers. I've, I've got enough that I'm putting aside for 10 years down the road. Hopefully, all these rookies aren't busts, and this this will end up like 2016 Tops Update. 2016 Update, you kind of have trouble even selling it for the original retail value of it. Not a whole lot of good stuff in 2016 Tops Update, apparently, based on the resale value. Here we go in the middle. We got a Sergio Romo. Ronald Acuna Jr., that's a nice rainbow parallel. Roger Maris, 1960 Tops design. There's the back of it. We got a vintage stock. Yes, Monty Grandal. And a Roy Halladay, 1984. Nolan Ryan, Alex Bregman, and Joey Gallo. Rafi says, your audio is better than Fox. <laughs> Thank you very much. Some people, who's announcing the game for Fox? Is it Joe Buck? Some people don't like Joe Buck. I never really minded him. Max Scherzer being a warrior tonight. Yeah, I don't know. I I picked the Astros to win this before the playoffs started. There's Michael Chavis, rookie card, rookie debut. Eric says he mutes his TV and listens in to me. <laughs> Thank you very much. Joe Buck and John Smoltz. Some people really hate Joe Buck, but I never really minded him that much. Maybe it's because I kind of grew up watching him. Kind of the only games I ever used to watch since we grew up without cable would be the playoffs. So come October, that's as a kid, that's when I was watching Joe Buck in the mid-90s. All right, next pack. Mm, you can always tell there's a relic in these by the side view. These boxes are really easy to search. Unfortunately, there's Keston here, a rookie card. I always, um, not always, but I have seen boxes of these just mutilated from people looking inside. It's really quite annoying. And El Canon with a $10 Super Chat says, Love your channel because it brings all the community together. The chat is filled with awesome content creators such as FDC Family Cards, Classic Cards, Chat Town Sports Cards and Breaks. They're all great. El Canon, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Thanks for being here tonight. You guys, make sure you check out El Canon's channel and give him a sub. And Jesse Stacy says, Max is going to wheel and deal tonight. Jesse, thank you very much. You'll have to keep me updated on the game if there's any score changes. I'm still picking the Astros to win. I think that there's a Vladdy Jr. rookie. I think that the, um, I don't know how long Max is going to be able to go. I don't know if he's completely 100%. He did have those neck spasms. So if he's completely back, I mean, he could, I mean, he could go all the way if he's the Max, if he's healthy, the Max of old. But I don't know. I feel like they're going to get into the bullpen at some point, And I feel like, I just feel like um, the Astros probably have a better bullpen game than the Nationals do. Ralphie says, Jabs, I got 10 bucks on Washington. <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, you might win. You never know. It's it, Anything could happen. Max has a great shot at pitching, a complete game, shutout. Never know. And TJCC says, nine away from 200. Thank you, everybody. Hashtag good luck. TJCC, thank you very much. Make sure you guys check out TJCC and help him out. Looks like we got 400 plus people in here. If you could like to help him, only nine folks need, need to get over there and help him, and he'll get to his goal. Where am I from? I am from, I guess, nearest Pittsburgh. Pennsylvania would be the closest big city. There's Keston here, a rookie card. He's going to be a key to the long term value of the set, along with this guy, Vladdy Guerrero Jr. The Sports Channel got a Chris Paddock Black Parallel. That's pretty awesome. There's Shane Bieber, not Justin. Max is looking a little off today. Shed Long, rookie card gold. Well, he was up in the bullpen last night. They're actually going to bring Scherzer in, and there he is. The man with two different colored eyes. They were going to bring him in last night, but 
then the um, Nationals pulled ahead, so they sat him back down. Good thing he didn't come in because he would have been unavailable tonight. That's Tatis Jr. John is smack dab in the middle between Cleveland and Pittsburgh. Nick Senzel, rookie. Probably pass by your town, whatever it is, all the time. He used to drive to Cleveland all the time for baseball games. Some years I'd go to 40-plus games up in Cleveland. Very nice stadium up there, Progressive Field. Vlad and the Tatis come out together. It's good to know. It's, it's the collation of this product. Sometimes cards like that are always going to be back-to-back -back near Youngstown, says John. All right, we're always up in your area for Four Seasons Flea Markets. That's probably dying down now, though. There's a Mike Yastrzemski. Matt Chapman. Lots of base. Luckily, I have a, a sorter who's really been very helpful. Sorted the entire... Pete Alonso gold! Very nice! So, we had Vladdy gold, and now we have Pete Alonso rookie debut gold. Very, very nice. That one's for the Mets owner, which is Gregory BF. Pete Alonso gold, what's that going for about? 25 bucks, maybe? I don't know. But it's a good one. You guys are going to have to let me know. That's money. Is 25 way low on that? I figure since there's 2019 of them, it can't be, like, super high. Jason's 15 minutes from David Adams. Joe iPhone says 30 to 45 bucks on the Pete Alonso gold. That's a pretty nice one. That's the whole first case. So eight are down, so now we're going to open up this next one. And we're going to take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll take the first seven out to round out break Y. Get these opened up. Put them all on the screen so I don't forget and start opening up a bunch of these. There are too many. How much is the whole crate? Um, retail, like 80 bucks plus tax. But they don't sell them like this. You have to buy them by the box, retail, if you can find them. I tried to buy a bunch of these at my Target. Um, they had just restocked, and I put a bunch of them in my shopping cart and took them over. And they told me, you can only buy two of these. And I was like, are you serious? They're like, yes, it's a limit of two per box. And I was like, okay. So I was like, that's never happened to me before. But they're like, yep, that's our policy. So I had to take them all back. And I also, this is really dumb. They had about six hot corner boxes there. And I've been trying to, you know, track as many of those down as possible. Because those go for like 30 bucks on eBay. They, they have Top Series 2 and Tops Update Jumbo and Fat Packs in there. And they told me I was only allowed to get two of those also, which is really dumb. So I had to put the other ones back and only was able to get two. Vladimir Guerrero, 1984. I was like, these came out in March. So, yeah, really disappointed. So I've been stopping off at that same Target every day on my way home from work and just picking up two, two, two each day. Self-checkout next time definitely is the way to go. Hey, True Seekers, how's it going? Who do I have in Game 7? I am taking the Strohs because I picked them before the World Series and I got to stick to it. Ralphie says, Ortiz bobblehead against the Astros. Thank you very much. Really appreciate that. Ralphie, what are we doing for Throwback Thursday tomorrow? We're doing a Garbage Pail Kids break from 1987. I picked up a couple boxes of those for... Oh, I think I paid like $106 a piece after tax and um, per box. So they are in very good shape. There's no big X outs on them, which is nice. And Kevin Jones says they only allowed you to be, buy two, ha yeah, two hanger boxes. Completely ridiculous. Because I've been going around all these different targets looking for the Topps Chrome update, and I can't find it anywhere. So if I find hanger boxes or if I find hot corner boxes, I'll try to buy those. And the one target won't let me buy more than two. And we have a hit. It's a David Dahl, Colorado Rockies hit. 
Relic hit David Dahl. This one is going out to our Rockies owner, which is Anthony D. Anthony, congratulations on your David Dahl All-Star Game. Relic there, that's not too bad to get a hit. It took about, what, nine, ten boxes, but we've got a hit. David Dahl. And moving on to the rest of these, 3,000 Ks. FTC's done with relics. Well, you might want to stay away from Topps Holiday then. Topps Holiday. Ralphie says, go back. What do you want me to go back to, Ralphie? You want me to show you the, the relic again? Yeah, we will be selling those Garbage Spell Kids in stacks. There's 48 packs per box. There's the David Dahl again for Ralphie. I think that's what you meant. It's game use memorabilia. We saw a bunch of these come out of um, the hobby boxes. It was, uh, what do we open, like 60 hobby boxes? And we had, I think it was 51 of those. 51 relics as opposed to nine autos. See, there's no relic in that. You can tell that one right there. Granky loss is no hitter already. Soto, you think Soto might end up being the MVP of the World Series? You might want to go ahead and, if the Nationals get ahead and it looks like they're going to put it away. You might want to hurry up and get on eBay and pick up some of his cards before they go up like 20%. Also on eBay right now, there's a 10% eBay bucks back until 10 p.m. tonight. Rubicon says, have the kids help you get more boxes and packs. I was thinking about that, Rubicon. I was thinking, you know what? If I find a target that has like 10 of those Chrome boxes, Chrome update, I should just bring my whole family in. And uh, each kid gets two apiece. But then I was thinking by that time, they'll probably all be bought. Because it seems like... I'm thinking that whenever they... I don't even know if they ever reach the, the shelves. I, I honestly don't know if they ever reach the shelves. There might be somebody working at Target that just buys them f straight from the boxes in the back room. I don't know. It's, it's weird. that I've been looking for them so hard. I eventually gave up and just started buying lots on eBay. You can buy lots on eBay about 10 to 15... People are selling them on there. And they usually are going for like 30 some dollars a box, like $35 on average, 30 to 35. Uh, Threat Killer saw 15 to 20 on a shelf at the target you work at. I wonder how long those are going to be there, Threat. That's pretty awesome. They're online now. I checked yesterday and it, on Target and it said they were sold out. I'll have to go and double check that. And that's some good info there if that's true. I would, I would buy Series 2, David. Joe, iPhone picked up 50 boxes. Did you got that all online, Joe? I'm surprised they didn't put a limit on that. That's pretty awesome. Maybe they... Um, there was about 400 boxes released before they sold out. All right, so I must have missed it. <laughs> you got 50 of them. That's pretty awesome. I would have probably tried to pick up about 100. I'd like to do about 100 boxes for a break, so I've been trying to... That's kind of like what I've been buying off eBay, Divisional Foes. Mr. Cano, short print in the last box. David, thank you very much. I'll go back and make sure we get that one out for you. As you No, you don't have the Mets. Gregory has the Mets, but we'll go back and get that one sleeved up. Cano, short print. Really appreciate that, David. I think your Patreon package went out today. There's Mike Mussina, short print. Oriole Park at Camden Yards. These short prints are pretty cool. I really like that one. He's walking in from... The bullpen towards the first base dugout. That's that big flag court out in right field. It came on a day of 50 boxes at a time. So I guess if you're not sitting there refreshing the page, it's going to be a tough one to get. Alches, how am I selling? I hope I said that right. How am I selling the Garbage Pail Kids? I'm going to sell them on Patreon. And it's going to be by the, um, by the stack. So there'll be eight stacks. Simon, thank you very much. Marlins will be good soon, says Hopeful Marlins fan. Hey, that Hopeful Marlins fan, is that Jorge, my student from fifth period Spanish? I think it is. Hopeful Marlins fan, I gave him a pack of Topps Update, and he pulled a Austin Meadows game-used jersey relic out of there. I must say that I was pretty jealous about that, because you guys know how I love Austin Meadows. Nice pull for sure. 
um, finding one of those, um, a relic out of one of those packs, pretty tough. Andrew, yeah, I am a teacher. There's Nate Low. I always have to think how you pronounce his name, Low or Lau. And Triple C's here, Cleveland Car Connection. How's it going? Yeah, I heard that last thought. I heard that some Walmarts are getting rid of the trading card sections, which kind of really sucks. Don't like to see that. But luckily, my Walmart still has them. Brandon says, there's a bunch of 2014 Donruss packs on clearance at Walmart. JRAM and Xander rookies were a cool surprise. Brandon, that's pretty awesome. I never see anything that old. I think there's some old like prism stuff at mine. Lots of um, lots of score football on the um, clearance rack at my Walmart. Not a whole lot of great stuff there. I always I always check it out just in case. You never know if you're gonna find 2018 Tops update hanging out in the clearance section. It's happened before. Guessing here a rookie card. Yeah, I'll be hitting up uh, Walmart looking for the Tops holiday coming out. It actually came out today, but can never actually find it on release day just because they don't stock the Walmarts until usually the weekends or even the week after. Tatis Jr., this is going to be a good pack. We also have an Independence Day coming up. Pee Wee Reese, 1956 design. It is Kevin Pillar out of 67. Here's the back of it. Or 76, sorry. Got confused that with the black parallel for a second there. And Bounty Hunter Breaks with a $5 donation. Thank you very much, Bounty Hunter Breaks. Really appreciate that. Joe Iphone says, Tops Holidays online as well. Is that at walmart.com, Joe? If it is, I'll probably just go and pick it up. But didn't they raise the price? I think they raised the price of Holiday from $19.99 to like $22.50 or something like that. I thought I read somewhere they were going to raise $22.84. Now, why the heck did they raise it up like three bucks? Just for that stupid relic? You get a guaranteed relic. Coastline says the one in Bridgeville had five Jumbo 18 updates. That's awesome. Yeah, if if I had the time, if I didn't have to teach every day, I would literally do a video and I'd try to go to like 100 different Walmarts like all over the whole East Coast area. Just, just because it would be a fun video to do and then all the Tops updates that I would hopefully find, I mean, selling off some of those packs would pay for all the gas and everything. That would definitely be something I would do, but obviously don't have the uh, the time to do that. Series Card says, got my box of 81 Donruss in the mail today. Series Cards, thank you very much. I hope you make a video about it and I hope you don't get a box like I had. By the way, this is the last box of Break Y. It is our 15th box. So we pulled some nice gold rookies out of here. Pete Alonso, Vladdy, got a Tatis rainbow, had an Acuna rainbow, and had the relic of David Dahl. And now that's going to do it for the folks in break Y. Daniel saw my Topps Fire opening. I don't know how I feel about Topps Fire. I'm kind of like middle of the road on it. When I first saw the design, I wasn't a huge fan because I, I don't know, something about the design not really captivating for me. And it looks like it's a, is it a one nothing game now? Guriel just hit a home run. Okay. So that's good for me, for my prediction. T-Dog, how's it going, man? All right, so... That one is in the books. TJCC says four away from 200 Astros just hit a home run. TJCC, thank you very much. I hope you guys will take a minute and support TJCC's channel. Check him out. Um, what was I in New Hampshire for, Cooper? I was up there for the World Series, and um, there was no hotel rooms anywhere in the Boston area because I ended up like booking it like the day before for a $6 World Series ticket. By the way, this is the folks in break Z. So... Uh, make sure you guys check out TJCC. He only needs four more subs. If you're an Astros fan, help him out because it looks like he was happy about that Astros dinger. All right, so break Z. We're going to open up a new one of these. And um, the extra box, I'll put, I'll put those extra boxes aside for the final round. 
So you get one of those from each of these cases. Flawless actually got delayed, Dante. It was supposed to come out today, but it got delayed. And now this is going to be too much in the way here. It comes out next Wednesday now, unfortunately. Got pushed back a week. And Andrew, we will be doing a Chrome update break. When uh, when I can get enough boxes in, I'd like to do probably at least five rounds of 20 boxes, and I've been buying up lots of them online from eBay. Yeah, paying like 30 to $35 a box on average, but it's better than driving to like spending all day driving around with different targets and then having nothing to show for it and wasting all that gas money. So I figure at the end of the day, I'm probably going to be spending the same amount either way. John A. says, go Nats. Thank you very much, John. Really appreciate that. John A. obviously rooting against the Astros because he's a Yankees fan. And the Astros knocked off the Yanks. Ralphie says, Hannes Wagner. Thought I'd seen his card earlier. Ralphie, you did see a Hannes Wagner. That was an iconic card. I probably should have spent a little more time on it. But they put in those iconic cards in the middle of some of these packs. They're just reprints. The actual Hannes Wagner card would be less than half of the size of one of these cards. It's not the act. That's not the actual size. Um, so would have been really awesome if it would have been a real one. Freddie Freeman gold, Javi Baez rainbow, eighty four Oscar Mercado rookie card, Baez and Yelich. Dallas P picked up seventy boxes of Chrome update at Target. Whoa, Dallas, big find right there, man. I, it looks like I'm gonna have to. Well, I was gonna say it looks like I'm gonna have to come down your way to look for. Tops Chrome update, but you probably bought them all. And El Canon says, please send all your unwanted Soto cards to my P.O. box on my About page. They are for a good cause. The Send El Canon to Spring Training Fund. Check out Joe iPhone Services and Austin Farmer. El Canon, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. If anyone has any Soto cards you'd like to donate to El Canon, he will definitely take them and um, maybe hold on to them for a little bit and then Watch them rise and flip them for some spring training tickets and transportation. Really appreciate that, El Canon. And TJCC says, 200. You reached it. Congratulations, man. 800 away from 1,000. Laugh out loud. Just kidding. Thank you, everyone, for the support. Really love this community. And my dad would have been so happy to see my new venture. That's awesome. TJCC, really appreciate it. Congrats on getting to 200. That's just one step on your... YouTube journey. Before you know it, um, you'll be um, you'll be up there over a thousand in no time. Strozer and business says Brandon. I wonder how long they're going to stick with Scherzer. We got a nineteen ninety Frank Thomas coming up. It looks like with his name on it. There's Chavis Rainbow Frank Thomas nineteen ninety tops iconic card right there. There's the back of it. Iced out blue parallel. Those are out of 50, 450. Another hit for the Astros. So what are they going to do? If Max Scherzer is getting pummeled, you know what? I don't think Strasburg can go back to back. Like, if I was Strasburg, why do that? I mean, you're 5-0 and this postseason. You're already losing. And pitching back to back after just almost throwing a complete game and throwing 104 pitches the night before, that's not smart. I mean... Strasburg is going to be a free agent after the World Series. I expect him to opt out of his contract. He has four years, $100 million left on his Nationals contract, but he can opt out. And uh, if he opts out, he's going to get a longer deal with more money. So expect him to opt out after the World Series and uh, sign a bigger deal. And uh, I don't know if he would want to put his arm in jeopardy there. Jason Lewis says, did you try to get Bowman Xbox? No, you mean from StockX? I read about it, but I did not put in a bid on a... Uh, case of those. I feel like they'll probably be pretty expensive. It's quite an interesting thing that they're doing with uh, StockX and Bowman, Bowman Chrome X or whatever. I think you get one card per per box of of uh, Bowman. Is it Bowman X or Bowman Chrome X? I don't, I don't even know, but I looked into it a little bit. They're treating it like a stock basically, where the uh, I guess the collectors set the price. It's all about supply and demand. There's Verlander. What the heck's up with this guy in the World Series? He's pitched eight games in the World Series. He's 0-6 in the World Series. And uh, 
crap the bed last night again. Keston Hira. Thought for a second there we we're going to get a 1976 style Independence Day parallel. But nope. Cheryl says, wish I had enough money to buy packs. Well, how old are you, Cheryl? You can always put a little bit of money aside. I mean, if you're like real young, then yeah, it's going to be tough to buy packs in today's, today's hobby. A lot of the packs were so expensive. Back when I was a kid, packs were like 50 cents a piece. Is Verlander a Hall of Famer? Heck yeah, definite Hall of Famer. He might even be a first ballot one when it's all said and done. Anyone know if Walgreens has exclusive hanger boxes? I believe they do have the hanger box with yellow parallels in them. You might be able to find them there. And while you're there, you can pick up one of those crappy prime product packs or whatever the heck they are. I forget what they were called. I know they're awful, that's for sure. Looks like we have another hit coming up. It is going to be... There's the Shohei Rookie. What is this card worth now, anyway? I feel like... This card, I've seen it so many times. Shoyo Tani Rookie. And we have an Aroldis Chapman. It's a $40 card? I thought it was going down. Like, I feel like it was like 24 and then, or 40, and then it went down to 20. Aroldis Chapman. If it's not corrected, yeah, it's not worth it. I agree with that statement. Kevin Jones says, I remember digging through rack packs at KB Toys. Kevin Jones, KB Toys was awesome. Um, I definitely went there a lot for cards as well. My brother as well. He used to love KB Toys and still does to this day. There's a roll of Chapman. That one goes out to a Yankees owner and breaks Z. That's going to be Zachary F. Congrats on your game used. A roll of Chapman. Best flea markets around Pittsburgh, says Baseball Card Addict. I would honestly just say watch our videos and see where we go because we, we go to a lot of flea markets, but honestly... Pittsburgh doesn't really have that many good ones. We usually end up driving like three hours away. We'll be going about, I don't know, a little less than two hours away this coming weekend, but we don't often stay in the Pittsburgh area. I mean, you have Trader Jack's, but I never find anything there. I never really find anything in any of the flea markets around Pittsburgh. There's not too many good ones, I guess. At least for baseball cards. I mean, if you're looking for other stuff, like video games and stuff like that, you can go to Trader Jackson and find stuff. But Next box. Yeah, Lancaster has uh, some flea markets. Their antique malls there are awful, though, for cards. Joss says Trader Jackson only has like two stands for cards on a busy day. Yeah, that's what I kind of found too, and the prices are pretty bad there. And Zachary Freeburn says, thanks for the Chapman. Zachary, thank you, man, for the support. Really appreciate that. Roldus Chapman. wonder if he's going to end up in the Hall of Fame someday. I don't know if he will or not. I haven't really looked too much at his stats. I feel like he's probably not going to get in because... I don't know. Usually closers like him that throw hard, if they lose their fastball, I don't know how much longer he'll be a closer because these younger guys are coming up throwing just as hard, if not harder than him. Nick Senzel, 150. Any good flea markets near Williamsport? I I don't know. I never really go to that area. Kevin Biggio, very nice. That's a nice short print photo variation there. Biggio, get that one put in the sleeve for you. Why don't I come to the Pirates games anymore, says Ben. And Wax TV says, I hit a Vlad Independence Day video is on the channel. Wax TV, thank you very much. I hope you guys will check out that video. That's a pretty nice hit right there. I haven't been to a Pirates game since I got injured um, at the ballpark. And uh, I don't know, just I missed like a whole week or two. And honestly, I just kind of like really enjoyed the time being away from the ballpark and with my family instead of you know, being stressed out at the ballpark and running around trying to catch baseballs and being short on time and then getting home at like 7.30 and not having enough time with my kids. So I was like, you know what? I'll just not do it anymore. T-Dog says, I, I, you, and John found the new guy at Adamsburg Fleet Teak. Oh, Beckett. Yeah, did you see that in the video? We made a special trip there because someone said there's a new dealer on the upstairs portion. You probably heard the disgust in my voice when I was like, why is that 1987 Barry Bonds 20 bucks? 
So we were actually not too happy about it because the prices were so high. I actually cut out a lot of the um, a lot of the banter between the two of us because I didn't want to hurt the guy's feeling if he was watching. I tried to, you know, I don't want to be too negative. But there's like John Wayner cards for like 25 cents and I don't know. Yeah, they were all Beckett prices. So, I mean, Beckett prices, if you want to price it at a Beckett price, it, I guess it's okay if you're there to cut deals and stuff. Like, um... At the mall, the, the card store we went to at the mall, a lot of those prices are Beckett price, but Victor will knock off like half. Be like, what do you want for this one? He'll quote something way lower than the price tag on it. So some card stores do that. They'll put the Beckett price on it, then they won't charge you nearly as much. But if it's at an antique mall where there's nobody working and you take the cards up to some old lady, then you can't really haggle at all. And Kay, Key Meng is a new channel member. Thank you very much, Key. I hope I said that right. Key or K? Really appreciate that. Colton's making a, a road trip to Burning Bridge Antiques. I've never been there, I don't think. We did do Hagerstown like uh, six months ago or something like that. And I can't remember exactly um, if we went there or not. Senzel, you should make an Instagram and post a schedule. That's not a bad idea. I just am so busy. Now that I've kind of simplified the Patreon packages, though, maybe I can free up a little more time. I'll tell you what. I used to, uh, with Patreon, I used to put in singles. Like, you get two cards, two bonus cards in this series and, like, ten bonus cards in this series, whatever. And that will ended up taking me longer to put those together than actually assembling the patreon pack so i just i eliminated those and added extra packs to each round and it's a lot easier just to grab like a few packs and put them together than find some singles sleeve them up or top load them put them in team bags all that stuff so maybe that'll create a little more time i actually have to do the uh, four dollar ones still hopefully can get to those tomorrow and get all those sent out I have somebody that handles that for me, and they keep asking me for the uh, the cards because they, they address the envelopes and they package it all up for me. And um, I've been so behind that I haven't been able to package the cards up for them so they can get them out for me. All right, this is our eighth box. Seven more to go after this one for the folks in Breg Z. Jason's put together three complete sets of this product. That's always fun to put together a set. Definitely like doing that. I feel like I'd be super good at that now just from organizing cards so often. I'd probably be pretty quick at it. There's Rivera and Willie Mays. And Kevin Jones says, I got my Patreon package today. The 2019 update cards were all banged up from the pack. That's awful, Kevin. Send me a, I'll, I'll get you another one out. That's... That really sucks. Was it just... I'm interested to know, Kevin, was it just the 2019 or was it like all the cards? Was it like every pack or just 2019? Because that will give me some insight if it was... Um, if it if it was the box that the pack came out of or not. Let me know, man, because I think you bought it in my break so I can just toss you an extra pack in. Next... Okay, just the 2019. Uh, Kevin, was it a hobby pack or was it like a retail pack? You'll have to, you'll have to help me out because um, some folks got hobby, some folks got retail. All right, so seven more boxes. Retail. Okay, I'll send you... A a couple then, man, because I that sucks, dude. Sorry to hear that. Chris Cards is here. Make sure you stay on me about it, Kevin, because there's so much stuff going on that I do tend to forget stuff like that. So stay on me and um, make a, a note there to get it in your next package. Send you a couple extra packs. That sucks, dude. Was there any good cards that were lost? 
I hope we didn't get like a camo Vladdy out of 25 in that pack. Chris says, you just bought a 2019 Holiday Blaster. You're lucky, Chris. You are so lucky. They just came out today, man. It looks like you have a good stalker at your Walmart. Around here, they don't usually come out um, for at least like a week. Kevin Jones says, don't worry about it. I know it's been an issue. Yeah, sorry, man. I apologize for the... Uh, I know that some of the tops that we opened out of the hobby, the, some of the packs were, or some of the cards were banged up, some individual cards, but... Maybe in their rush to get this stuff on the shelves, they, I don't know, mishandled the cards. 357 MAGA says, Eric Jabs a true legend, best YouTube channel ever, 357 MAGA. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Make sure you guys check out 357. He is a very cool dude. And, uh, I, I, I'll tell you what, man. I was so happy for you whenever you pulled that one-of-one one Vladdy. Joe Yankee, they just went out today, man. They just went out today. So you'll probably have that within two days. That's the one with the baseball. I was packaging those up today on my lunch break. We got Martin Maldonado. Gold. Keston Hira. Very nice. That's a big hit right there. Keston Hira. 1976. Out of 76, Independence Day design. What do you think that's worth? I'm going to say that's a $100 card right there. You can tell me if I'm wrong. It's um, going to Brad B. Congratulations, Brad. You'll have to probably look it up on eBay. It's uh, 11 of 76. Kest in here. Uh, Ralphie says $1. Shaq is, is at $150. I'm, th I'm thinking it has to be at least 100 bucks. For the Hira, let me, where did my, here we go. Put your break letter on the back. Put the letter Z on there, Keston Hira. Eric Z says, my first break tonight. Thanks for my 1971 Ryan. Eric, thank you, man. Sorry it took a long time to get all those auctions sent out. Um, I think I'm just going to have my wife do the next one we do and just give her all the cards. 70 bucks says Vish. I think, speaking of the auctions, I kept a, um, I kept a folder of everything, and there's, like, not a whole lot of people paid. There's only, like, a couple left that I have to send out. I think I ended up selling, like, 100 cards or something like that, and uh, pretty much nobody paid. That Keston's go for 300 bucks? That's crazy. Always look at the recently sold, so that's your best indicator, because someone could list that for 300 but... If most of them are selling for a hundred, Keston Hira, Independence Day, biggest one, uh, two hundred bucks, very very nice. Yeah, Kevin, that really stunk because um, cost a lot of people from getting cards that they were probably interested in, and kind of wasted my time, wasted your time. And if we do an auction again in the future, it's going to be Patreon slash members only. There's a Frankie Liriano, so it'll be a private one on Patreon. Just for you guys. We had like 10-year-olds coming in there and bidding up like, um, you know, cards that should be like $10 cards for like 80 bucks or whatever. Eric loves his vintage. How many true hits, says Ralphie? Well, two, I guess. The um, the uh, Chapman and the David Dahl were the two true hits if you go by top standards. Although a lot of times these kind of cards, these numbered cards for rookies, those are where most of the value's at in Tops Update. I mean, relics are cool and stuff, but a lot of relics are only worth several dollars. And... Um, if you pull like a Senzel out of like 25 or out of 50 or out of 67 or out of 76, you got some nice money there for any of those rookies, actually. Senzel, Vladdy. Let's turn that around for the Griffey family, not family business, the 1869 Reds commemorative card. Vladdy Sr., 
Alonso Rainbow, yep. And um, Oscar Mercado, Amir Garrett. Three boxes left for you guys in break Z. I just went, um, after we get to break Z, we get to break double A. It just make, it's, it's mostly just for me to keep things organized. Helps me easily be able to find the, the cards. Kevin says, I'm totally sold on hanger boxes. Great stuff. Yeah, man. Um, haven't seen any damaged cards coming out of hanger boxes yet because obviously they're, they're tougher to bang up because they're hanging on the, um, on the shelves. So they don't get tossed around in the shelves below for people looking for Topps Chrome update and falling off the shelves and onto the, onto the, the ground on their corners and stuff. Um, surrounded by cardboard. So I feel like these are probably the best to buy if you want to get them in, you know, mint condition coming out of the box. I'm always really wary of um, the fat packs. And El Canon says, the hero that you see right here, that's a $200 card. Very, very nice. Caleb says, someone searched all the hangers at your target. That is awful, dude. Cooperstown Bounce says, in honor of keeping spammers away and allowing Eric to continue to produce top shelf content, Cooperstown, thank you very much for the donation. Really appreciate that. Make sure you guys check out Cooperstown and give him some support. Really appreciate that. But if you ever buy these, what um, Caleb, I think it was Caleb was talking about, if you see something like this where this is pressed down, the searchers will go like this, and then they will look in there down at the cards, and they can uh, they can see if there's a relic in there. I can see there's not a relic in there at all. Uh, so you can see uh, the light's not going to go in there, so you're not going to be able to see what I see. But I don't know why they would do that to look for a freaking three dollar relic. I mean, you still could find good cards in there, but. Your resale value on the box, if you want to resell this in 10 years and you're not opening it, probably just um, plummeted because of that. So that's why I'm buying these sealed um, eight box cases like crazy. If I can ever find them popping up on eBay for a good deal, which I'll tell you what, they keep going up and up and up. Every week, they're more than they were the previous week. All right, so this is our second to last second to last box for the folks in break Z. That's crooked to do that. Yeah, you also got to check the um, basically anything. Check it out really well. I, I was looking at the hot the hot corner boxes, and even those were a couple of those were searched. Like the bottom was like pressed in, and what they were doing is they were pressing in the bottom of the hot corner boxes. And they were looking to see if there's tops update or 2018 Top Series 2 in there, which is really annoying because that's pretty much the only reason why I want to buy them. But obviously, I'm not doing that. That's so crooked. Boswell, I will ship to the UK. Who do I want to win the World Series? I picked the Astros because I love Garrett Cole. Crimson found a hot corner box with the packs out and all the way open. Yeah, man. That's pretty common. Watch out for that stuff. I've heard a lot of stories from people that have bought retail and just have had, you know, their stuff completely gone through. Anything good? Yeah, we just pulled a two hundred dollar Keston Hira out of seventy six. It's about one hit per round. I like that picture of Hunter Pence. Yeah, I mean, you'll have to pay the shipping because sh sending overseas is really expensive so i get free shipping in the united states so there will be a fee for that charged by ebay but definitely uh have it set for worldwide joe Yang, you got two plunk rookies and a swindell rookie in the 87 break yesterday oh boy sorry about that that would be pretty funny if he made the title looking for eric plunk rookies <laughs> that would definitely be pretty funny if he did that all right so that's it for break z so that was the best card out of there. Cooperstown says, yes, the hot corner boxes at his target were all searched. Yeah, you really have to watch those hot corner boxes. I've noticed they're popping up a little more. Like I said, I found five at my one target. 
and uh, they wouldn't let me buy them. There's like the oh, limit on two of all all baseball cards, limited to some old lady. Like she was probably like 85 years old. Well, not really. She's probably like in her 60s, but she's like she called her manager over. Like you're really gonna call your manager over for like eight boxes of tops update and like five hot corner boxes? Like what's this about? She's giving me like a dirty look, like I was some kind of like I don't know thief or something. Like, uh, is it wrong that I'm buying these to to do a break on them? That's what I wanted to do them for. Um, the, the manager comes over. Yeah, we only sell two card boxes um, per person. That's just the way we do it around here. That's our store policy. And I was like, so. Even these that came out back in March? Like, yes. Chat Town says, love the break. Check out El Canon for great, great stuff. Ch Chat Town, really appreciate that. I almost wish I had my uh, video glasses on in there. <laughs> it would have been a pretty funny video. Just, just to get my... Um, I, was, I almost felt like I was on some sort of like TV show or something. All right, so that's it for break Z. Moving on to Double A. Here's all the folks in break Double A. These are 15 hanger box breaks. There's all of your names. There we go. Guy stalking, probably feed the cases to their guy. Yeah, I'm sure that's, I really feel like that happens, Kevin. I don't know. I don't know how the heck. I don't, I just don't understand how they can just never appear anywhere. I think what probably someone does out there is they probably have the um, the schedule down. Like they probably know when the the uh, the card stock guy goes in and stocks the shelves because I think it's an independent guy that comes in and and does the, the cards. He probably like knows knows when he's going to be there and he sits out in Target the Target parking lot and waits for him and he probably knows the whole route and probably follows him from Target to Target to Target and just buys everything. And so literally they like sit down on the shelves for maybe like a few minutes and then he, he goes in. I was thinking that's probably what has to happen because in all the targets that I've gone into, there's been like, they've been stocked nicely and there's been a big gap of like emptiness where probably the uh, Chrome update was. Kevin says they're stocking tomorrow at 8 a.m. Be here. <laughs> Kevin, thank you very much. I definitely need to make friends with the stock guy, but I don't buy enough retail to, to do that. The only time I'm buying retail is when there's a special release like, um, you know, like Topps Chrome Update and I want to get some boxes for a break or um, Topps Holiday. I feel like Topps Holiday won't be that hard to find because they jack the price up a little bit. There's the Shoyo Tani quote-unquote error card. Uncorrected error card, I should say. I haven't seen a corrected version yet. Has anyone seen a corrected version of that Otani on eBay yet? I mean, by now, it's that card's there's so many of those cards out there. I feel like that should just be, like someone said, your basic common 84. Will I be opening any gallery? Yes, indeed. I will be opening gallery when that comes out. That's another retail one. I'll try to get, I, that's galleries. I always see gallery all over the place. I feel like that'll be an easy one to pick up. If you want to go to the biggest flea markets, come on down to East Texas, Canton's first Monday's trade days. Over 100 acres and 6,000 vendors. What? Paul, that's pretty crazy. I'm going to have to make a note of that. Do they have baseball cards there, though, man? Let me know, because my brother and I went to supposedly one of the biggest flea markets out in, um, I think it was in Indiana. Something like that, like... Tons and tons of acres and thousands of dealers, and we couldn't find a single car dealer out there. It was kind of like an Amish country. We stopped on the way to the National, and it was awful. We were definitely disappointed. I know that some of those flea markets, depending on the area, if they're, I guess if they're far away from a Major League Baseball team, you might not find too many baseball cards or baseball memorabilia around, especially if it's in the middle of like Amish country like the one we went to was. Austin says, I'm in East Texas and have never come across a flea market. Then again, most of my time is spent on campus. You got to get out there and hit the uh, flea market circuit, Austin. Tyler's dad bought eight boxes of 2019 Chrome Update. That's pretty awesome. 
You're bound to find at least one autograph if you open all of them up. And Crimson got a Senzel miscut in short print. That's pretty awesome. You might have something there. I, I really can't give you any advice. Joe iPhone probably might know a little bit more about that one. Scherzer versus Alvarez right now. That's a good matchup. Your Don Alvarez is going to be your rookie of the year. We got a camo coming up. Here comes a camo out of 25. Some good value here if it's a rookie. Unfortunately, it's Marco Estrada. I was hoping that um, you can see there's the number one of 25. I was really hoping that it was going to be one of the rookies. Nick Senzel, 84. And we have a hit. It's going to be a Jorge Polanco from the Twins, our third relic that we've pulled. And Lucky says that his Chrome Update pack was a dud. The only card he got of any value was a Keston Hira. That's sad to hear. Sorry about that. That's the way it goes sometimes. You only get 28 cards, so... You might end up with a bunch of, like, the All-Stars. And um, some of those guys that change teams. I think they put, like, 17 players that change teams. Yep, another Jorge. Hopeful Marlins fan. We had our second wiffle ball game. What was that? Two days ago? No. Yesterday. Second wiffle ball game. Our team ended up winning, what was it? Six to nothing, I think. Nobody had any home runs. I hit one off the wall. I thought it was gone and stood there like an idiot. Like I pulled a Ron Acuna Jr. and just stood there watching it. But Wynn brought it back. Definitely a fun time playing wiffle ball again. I'm going to try to do the wiffle ball series that we wanted to do this summer. I wanted to do wiffle ball Wednesdays and have like a wiffle ball game. Kind of like how Dodger Films has his softball series. And just do it with all wiffle ball. But... Just got so busy that I never got around to getting that off the ground. I might do a little bit uh, this winter with my brother and maybe like one of our friends doing some home run derbies or something like that for a video. All right, next pack. Yeah, just it'd be fun, Lucky. Something different. Any interest in the Bowman Chrome X IPO on StockX? I think today's the last day to put your bid in on that, Tuke. So, Kevin says, you'll have to show a video of the knuckler. I don't throw a knuckler at all. Oh, here's the, here's the red, by the way, that you guys are asking for. Freddie Galvis out of 76. That eh, might be a couple dollars. So common. One said sports card says, nothing better than a game seven jabs and a 300 sub giveaway. DeGrom auto to 16 and an Acuna Jr. rookie. Go Nats, go jabs. Love the hanger update packs. One cent sports cards. Thank you very much. I hope you guys will take a minute. And check out one cent. Get yourself in on that giveaway. It's a very awesome giveaway. All you have to do is take a minute, click on the super chat, click go to channel, and hit that sub button. Sure got your first jazz pack. You loved it. Your first Patreon pack. Thank you very much. Really appreciate um, all the support of all you guys over on Patreon. And I'm thinking about doing something. I, it's going to be... Something I haven't done before on Patreon. For the holidays, I was thinking about trying to do a giveaway every day of something on Patreon. Like every day there's some special giveaway. It might just be a card. It might be a box. It might be, I don't know, some sort of baseball memorabilia. It might be the Dodgers jacket that somebody donated to my channel. The uh, One of the last Fan Mail Fridays. Um, stuff like that. Because I've got a lot of stuff that I'd like to give back to you guys from Patreon. A lot of it's from Fan Mail Friday. Like... People have sent me some cool stuff that they've always said to, uh, you know, pass on to Patreon patrons or whatever. But I was thinking about maybe doing something like that on Patreon in November and December. And just, um, you know, I, w I wouldn't really have to, you know, pay for shipping or anything. I just put it on a giveaway shelf. And then when it comes time to send your Patreon package for the next month, just drop it in there. I need to uh, get that organized, though, because sometimes with the giveaways, I forget about them. And then the Ends up being months until you get it. Just ask J&W cards. <laughs> he won his back in like mid-July, and I sent it to him like a couple weeks ago. Estrada isn't fan-friendly. That's not cool. All right, so here we go with the next pack. Vladdy is in there.
Oh, yeah, I definitely kept the Van Slyke Auto. If there's stuff like that that people have said this for my PC, it goes in a special spot. Yeah, there's some stuff that people that I can tell they've, like, went above and beyond to send stuff for my personal collection, like Greg with the uh, autographed mantle book, stuff like that. If I know that they, they meant it for my collection, that, that stays in a special spot. We get passed down to EJ or Olivia. FDC Family Cards, $26 tier went out on... I think Monday. Monday or Tuesday, one of those days. But yeah, it's out. You should probably have it tomorrow. And Michael Padgett, Bass and Ball Card says, Hey, Eric, got Patreon today, and I hit a Soto in the Topps 18 Update Series 2. Or Topps Series 2. Any auto tonight? Congrats, man. Um, no autos tonight yet. Yeah, some of you guys, I think everyone actually in the 26th tier, you either got a Topps Update from 2018 pack, or you got a 2018 Top Series 2 pack in there. I tried to put one of those higher-end cool packs in there, and I'm glad you got the Sota. That's awesome. Cards for Days got the $26 one today. So, yeah, I think I sent it out on Monday. Definitely, it takes a long time to put those together, so you might think it would be, be quick and dirty, but it's... Um, I think um, I did the $14 one today. It took me about, I don't even know how long. I, I got it sent out today, and I think the total packaging time was about seven hours to get everything, all the packs aligned and then packaged up and then packaged up again because I, I think I, I, double, I double bubble those ones, double bubble mailer them, and then to print all the shipping labels. It's, it's, it's a long process, but almost done with it all for the month. Granky's a monster fielder, says Peyton. Yeah, Granky's a good athlete. He's also a really good hitter. Granky, um, if he wasn't a pitcher, he probably could be like a bench player. That guy's got some power. Kevin says, haven't seen those 91 studio cards in a long time. It was a fun open. Brings back memories. That was about the end of your collecting years as a kid. Kevin, so you must have the $26. I think 26 got the uh, 91 studios in there. I bought a whole case of those. Um, I don't know, like a month or two ago. So I've got 10 boxes of those. So those will be coming coming here and there in your Patreon packages. Looking for the Jeff Bagwell rookie card. Hey, Vladdy Jr. Gold. Very nice. So we had the Vladdy Jr. Gold Home Run Derby version. And now we have the Vladdy Jr. Gold Base version. This is his base rookie card. That's a good one right there for Rob G., I know Rob will like that one. He's up there in Canada, so that's that's his uh, home home team right there. Vladdy Junior Gold, probably like thirty dollar card at least. Uh, if it ninety five bucks on that, wow. Yeah, I guess the uh, the base rookie is going to be worth a lot more than like the All Star or the uh, debut. Usually, the debut is worth about half what the base goes for. $100 card, Vladdy Jr. Very, very nice. Congrats on that one, Rob. Daniel said you guys loved Granky when he was with Arizona. Yeah, he was great for you guys. And Michael's got one of those for $75. All right, so that whole hanger case is done seven more boxes i gotta pick out here for you guys let's take the first seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and a seven one not to go to the bottom of the four so that game's motoring along any fun plans over christmas break mark i you know what that's a good question i I haven't made any plans yet. Maybe talk to my brother and see if there's any like um, flea markets that are farther away that might go for uh, an overnight trip or a weekend. David said, all you scrubs bought out the Brewers. Yeah, everyone after the Keston Hira, I think the Brewers were like only like 19 bucks in this, which isn't bad to get a, your shot at a few Hiras. And my, my bro's here, what's up, Jono? Just talking about maybe plans over Christmas break. I've got a nice long Christmas break this year, so I don't know what the heck I'm going to do. Also thinking about P 
people have asked me from time to time to do a 24-hour live stream, that would be the time that I would do it around Christmas break because I would obviously have the whole next day to recover and days after where I wouldn't have to go to work since I'm a teacher, Kevin Crone. There's the Frank Robinson 57 Tops reprint. That's his rookie card. I actually have one somewhere in my collection. There's the Home Run Derby Vladdy. My brother's still recovering from the Quisenberry and Plonk break. I wasn't able to watch that because I was so busy doing Patreon stuff. The end of the month is always like Patreon week. I'll have to go check that out. Joe Yankee was talking about the Eric Plunk rookies being found, and I was like... He should probably just change the name of the video to Looking for Eric Plunk Rookies, and you'd probably get all those trolls that love Eric Plunk over on your channel to get in there and, you know, watch that and enjoy that. I don't have cable to watch Game 7. I'm planning on maybe just trying to find a feed right around 11 or whatever. Whenever the game's near the end, watch the uh, last inning. I always like to break on Wednesdays. That's kind of like... You know, the day I always live stream on. So if I, I, if I miss a Wednesday, people might wonder what I'm doing. I'm trying to have some kind of regularity. Like right now we have live streams every Wednesday. We have throwback Thursdays on Thursdays. We used to have FAML Fridays on Fridays, but now Fridays are pretty much wide open. You should get a TV antenna. Yeah. Serious cards, those all went out on Monday. A lot of people said they got theirs today, so you'll probably get yours tomorrow. Look for either a pack of 2018 Tops Update or a pack of 2018 Top Series 2 in those. And then we've got Austin Riley Rookie Debut Gold. Pretty cool, out of 2019. YouTube TV, 107 channels for 49 bucks. That's not bad. If I watch TV, I would probably um, do that because $49 is a lot less than basic cable. I think it's like, if you want to have like a regular, like, I don't know, regular cable around here, probably like 100 bucks at least. Someone's live streaming the game on YouTube. Well, that's pretty cool. Unfortunately, they're going to get their YouTube channel banned. I guarantee, go ahead and sub up to them and um, maybe within a few hours their YouTube channel will have disappeared and been eradicated from the face of the earth. Yeah, you can usually find it, Ralphie. People don't realize the strict rules and they'll start live streaming the game on YouTube and then... Yeah, 20,000 people. If you wanted to get a bunch of subs, if that was legal, that would be a cool way to do it. I was actually thinking about doing a live stream during each of the World Series games and just having like a live chat while I watched it, but I realized there's no way for me to watch it. Um, even if I watched it online, there would be probably like, I don't know, like a minute delay and it would just be like annoying because everybody would be spoiling what's coming up. I don't think my brother has cable either. We both have Netflix. I was talking about how I used to go on to um, Reddit streams and be, been able to watch all the games for free, but somebody said that's illegal and that I could get, like, my IP banned for that, so I stopped doing that. What's Olivia being for Halloween? I think she's being Anna from Frozen. I'm pretty sure. That channel got killed, so you must have been watching it. Yeah, if there's an illegal stream, then boom, that channel is going to get taken down pretty quickly. Unless you can find one that, that has like a secretive name where they don't call it the World Series live stream and they call it something else. Sean Anderson Gold. And I saw a super chat pop up there from David says, Prospect Alert, sleeper card in this product is Luis Arise, I think that's how you pronounce it. Someone corrected me on that name pronunciation. I think I originally said like Arias or something like that. Arise with the Twins. One of the few pros products he's in this year, if he does well, that's going to be money. That's a good one. David Johnson, thank you very much for that tip. So if you have any Luis Arise cards, 
You might have something there. Yeah, we haven't seen a lot of his cards, so that might be like the rookie card for him if he does make something of himself. That's a good tip. Thank you very much, David. Always like tips like that. Adam says, you should consider doing Facebook. Good way to communicate and market for live feed stuff and updates. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. I feel like most of my, um, most of the people that I kind of broadcast to, so to speak, or try to reach are on YouTube anyway. So I usually just put it up on the community tab when a break's coming up a few hours ahead of time. But that might be something. Also, I reach people on Patreon. And Braden says, Eric, where did you get your break mat? I'm trying to start up on eBay and I want to customize my own. Braden, thank you very much. Um, I can't really tell you where I got this at because I don't know. This was sent to me as a gift by Dear Someone, an awesome YouTuber. Uh, he also did my brothers. So honestly, I would probably, if you want to, I, I guess I can maybe point you in the right direction. Look up like large mouse pad. That's really what this is. It's a large mouse pad. And um, it's probably like, I don't know, around 18 inches tall by 24 inches wide, maybe even more than that. It's pretty large. That's what you should look up. Probably there's companies out there that have websites that you can go to and just upload the image that you want. Did I show the no purchase necessary goodie? No, I did that in a preview video, but I'll show you again. On the next box, there's Trevor May, Josh Harrison. Kevin Jones says, Larice Arise. There's a Nolan Ryan short print. That's the first time I've seen this one. Let's get that in the sleeve. Nolan Ryan going around in a classic car there. David John says, you should do Twitch broadcast, do a weekly card talk show. That would be pretty cool, David. <coughs> That's something I would definitely consider doing. If, if I didn't have like a job... I would do a lot more stuff like that just because I would have the time to. But um, every day I'm 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 working from 5:30 a.m. until about 4:30 p.m. So that's 11 hours a day gone right there. And um, I don't know, maybe in 10 years that's something that we do. Really appreciate the support though. And Kevin says Luis Arias had 109 hits in 92 games, 334 average. So maybe we should keep an eye on that. Kevin, thank you very much for your support, and also David, appreciate it, man. Like that Nolan Ryan a lot. Get that in the sleeve. Twins had a lot of bright spots. Yeah, Twins, um, what do you work for? You mean my job? I'm a high school teacher, so... Um, no, not PE. PE would be definitely fun, but I teach Spanish. Still, still fun. Some of my students are probably in here right now. Saw one of the uh, students slash wiffle ball opponents in here, Jorge. How does a no purchase necessary work? I'll show you in a second on the, on the final box of this round. Hey, there he is, hopeful Marlins fan. My student Jorge. And a wiffle ball competitor in the wiffle ball league. And here's the no purchase necessary. Basically, what you have to do is you send a postcard in. Like um, or like an, an index card to that, an address, and you have a chance to win some cards. Um, you can put in a request. Sometimes you win, sometimes you don't. I've actually never done it. Brain says, any advice on how to do eBay breaks? I'm having trouble getting mine filled. I've only been able to get one filled. Brayden, thank you very much. Um, and you know, if you want to, you could get the vi the um the link sponsored on eBay so that it appears at the top of the search results. Although you're gonna have to pay for that. I forget if it's like 10 bucks or whatever, but that's one way you can do it. Also, I would just say, start posting on social media to um, drum up some interest. But Brayden, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Uh, good luck with getting them filled. I would also maybe just start low and maybe only do like one box or one, you know, one case at a time until you start filling those breaks up and get some repeat customers. Noe said that you got your October package. That's awesome for Patreon. And Wiffle Ball is, yeah, it's after school on Tuesdays and Fridays. And there's Brian Rossetti, another Wiffle Ball player. He's my teammate on my Wiffle Ball team. He's a ninth grader. And he had a foul ball home run in the Wiffle Ball game the other day. Would have been a dinger if it, he didn't, you know, 
yank it a little bit foul. And there's Hope from Wellens fans saying Brian's a bum. Some wiffle ball trash talk. <laughs> hey, you can't talk about a leadoff hitter like that. Just the rest of that pack. This is the end of this round for break double A. And now moving on to the next round, break double B. Here's all the folks in break double B. Mark says, thanks for teaching. My Russian teacher still supports me on Facebook to this day. That's awesome. Glad to hear that. I'm, I'm thinking about for the Wiffle Ball series, I would bring back some of my students that are all grown up, you know, like over 18. They're probably in their 20s. Like, you know, like really, really good kids that I would like to, uh, you know, bring on board to play Wiffle Ball again. Definitely have had a lot of great students over the years. All right, so we're on to our next round. Brand new cases you see. These come in big old packs of eight. Daniel says, I bought five $20 boxes of Chrome Update and only ended up with one numbered parallel. That's kind of a bummer. Sorry about that. At least you found some, though. Break double D's going to be epic. I didn't even think about that, David. Yep. Should be an interesting one. Kevin said he had a couple of great high school teachers. That's awesome. Says uh, Mr. Basser inspired you to move to New Mexico. That's pretty cool. I think everybody's had some good teachers that you remember to this day. It's having a positive impact. I, I remember some of mine. Then there's some that I have literally no idea. Like, I can't even remember their names. Mark says, Jazz Wiffle Ball charity game live on YouTube. That would be awesome, man. All right, so we're into break double B. And 15 boxes per round. The good stuff is always in the middle, so that's where you're going to find your short prints, your inserts. There's Joe Biagini. And there's a Griffey Jr. 89 Bowman. I missed a dono, says Peyton. Whoops, sorry about that. Let me go and scroll up and find it. FDC Family Cards says time for some autos. 53 away from 500 FDC. Thank you very much. Hope you guys will take a minute and check out FDC Family Cards channel. And it looks like I'm getting a visit from a very special visitor. And Brayden says, how do I join Wiffle? I emailed you a while ago. Brayden, thank you very much. Really appreciate that. Well, I don't really have anything going on for Wiffle Ball in terms of like our Wiffle Ball uh, League. The Wiffle Ball League that I'm in right now that I've organized, that's for my school and for my students. So that's kind of like closed to the public. Um, and I can't film those because they're my students. And I feel like that's kind of like a conflict of interest because I would be having kids under the age of 18 being in a video that would be monetized. And just, I don't know, it's kind of a bunch of gray area there. So... If I ever do like a wolf ball series, it would be all adults for the most part over the age of 18. Unless like maybe you, maybe you could have a kid there if their parent signed off or whatever. It's just kind of it's a gray area that I don't really want to get into. All right, so here's our next pack for the folks in double B. Yeah, we don't want to mix subscribers and students. Joe says Maze or Ruth all time. You gotta go with Babe Ruth. Definitely Babe Ruth. I mean really Maze was awesome, but don't get me wrong about that. Babe Ruth, great pitcher for the first uh quarter of his career or so and then home run king for many years. What's the big deal about hanger boxes, says Hayden. I feel like these are the best value out of retail. You pay 14.9 cents a card, which is way less than um, blaster boxes. I think blaster is about 20 cents a card. And um, the cards are better shaped coming out of coming out of the packs and like david says better odds on everything except for the autos we haven't pulled an auto yet we pulled some relics pulled a lot of numbered cards rainbow parallels all that stuff this pack is being 
particular. There we go. Peyton says you got to head to bed. Okay, man. Thanks for checking in. Let's get to the middle. Here we go. Gary Carter, Nate Lau, no, Nate Lowe, Brennan Rogers. One of these days I'll get Nate's name figured out. Wrigley says, did I end up getting a World Series game? Nope. Prices spiked too high. They went up over $1,000 a ticket. And then by the time the Nationals got down on the series, the Sunday game went from over a thousand down to about five hundred, but there wasn't really enough time to like get down there and everything. Uh, Hopeful Marlins fan, who's one of my students, says, "What is your favorite team?" Because you change it like every five minutes. I I guess my, you know, my all time favorite team is obviously the Pirates, just because I grew up loving them. But I'm just really kind of fed up with them recently. I wish they would get a new owner and everything. But right now, I'm loving the Astros because I love Garrett Cole. Would I discipline a student if they were up late to class because they were watching Game 7 of the World Series? Um, no, I would just give them a warning. That's our school policy. Is, um, the first time they're late to class, you just give them a warning anyway. I think it might be the first three times that, that they're late to class. Then you start giving them detentions and working your way up to referrals to the office there we have a hit it's joey gallo relic game used joey gallo that one goes out to our rangers owner rangers owned by mr goody mr goody said it was his first time ever buying into a break and um mr goody you have a joey gallo coming your way all-star card there i think that's a good time for me to take a drink Drink of good old H2O. Now I should be good for the rest of the time. Gets hot under these bright lights. I've got two large, um, like professional photography lights. And Wrigley says, I wish I knew this was a team break. I would have bought into it. Me done. <laughs> Thank you very much, Wrigley. Really appreciate that. Series card says, I supervise 300 people and no one knows I'm a closet card freak. I keep work, YouTube videos, and the hobby separate. That's a great idea, Series Cards. Yeah, unfortunately, um, everybody knows about my YouTube channel at school now. No hiding it. We even have some of my students in here watching right at the moment, which is appreciated, appreciated much. Is it high quality H2O? It's um, it's Walmart Aquafina. When's our next box break? We will be doing, there's Trevor Story Gold. We will be doing, there's Carlos Santana Rainbow. Topps Chrome Update sometime next week. And also Panini Flawless, which comes in like a, a briefcase, which is pretty interesting. What's the next break? Cheryl just... You just asked a question that I just answered. Must be a little bit of a delay. Panini Flawless? Pretty expensive, yeah. I forget what the price is, but you can look up those cases on eBay. They are up there. It's like two, I think it's two boxes per case. Two briefcases, two briefcases per case. Chase Darno. We don't have school on Friday, which is pretty cool. I guess um, all the kids won't have to worry about doing homework then. At the end of every nine weeks, they have a what's known as a clerical day where teachers just get to have the day to work on their grades, get their rooms cleaned up, work on lesson plans, do whatever's, whatever's needing done, basically. It's almost like, you know, clerical day, free day for the teachers just to get stuff done. There's J.D. Hammer out of... 76 JD Hammer. Hammer time. 44 of 76. 
No school on Friday. Teacher day only. Um, with our school calendar, there's 180 student days and 188 teacher days. So there's eight days where we go in for in-service meetings or clerical days. Like there's four of those. I love those the best just because basically you just do work at your own pace. And I just pulled my fingernail off there. Wow. That not going to, I'm not going to open that with that finger anymore. All right. Well, these are definitely a much harder open than your regular boxes. Bo says you have 183 teacher days. 188 would be awesome. Um, that's more work for you, though, if you think about it. We actually used to have 192 teacher days. This is the first year under our new contract where it got reduced to 188. So, you know, with contracts and stuff, you go back and forth between... You got to work it out with the school board... Obviously, the teachers want to be compensated fairly. There's a Paul Goldschmidt. I think that's a short print. So you want this. They want this. You compromise with whatever. So one of the, I guess one of the compromises was taking some days of um, – some work days off. Paul Goldschmidt, I do believe. Get a, no, a, tail no, a toenail file to slice them open. That's a great idea. That would probably be a lot easier. I'm pretty sure that's a short print, Paul Goldie. Let me check the back. Um, really tough for me to see that number. Can you see it? 55. Yep, that's a short print. Because as you see, all the other cards end in 10. So we got a short print, um, Goldie. Very nice. That's how you can do it. If you're not sure, check the number on the back. If the last two numbers are a 55, you got a short print. Every other card, your regular cards, is numbered with the last two numbers being... One zero. Nice little handy tool that Tops puts on there for us. And 57, as David points out, that's a super short print. Uh, did you have your evaluation observation yet? No, that usually happens, Brett, around the end of the year. Usually, I want to say that's about April, somewhere in there, March, April. Well, someone suggested a, tail, a toenail file, so here we go. Let's give this a try. Just happen to have one sitting right here. Yep, that's definitely a little easier. Thank you for that tip. SSP stands for super short print. Yes, indeed. FTC says, teacher's been on strike for two weeks. Yep, had one on standby, hopeful. I'm like MacGyver, MacGyver here. Just got to have, you know, all the tools of the trade. <laughs> you just happen to have a toenail file sitting right near you. Brett says the principal evaluates every teacher twice a year. Mike Trout Gold, very nice. Mike Trout out of 2019. Yeah, it used to be like that here. They changed it up in Pennsylvania a little bit. Now it's once a year. I remember as a first-year teacher, they used to do it four times a year uh, for the first couple years. My brother heard someone say MacGyver. Yep, someone said, you need to get a toenail file to open up those boxes, and I just happened to have one sitting, like, on hand because um, the glue on the bottom was making my thumbnail, like, pull back, and I, I hate that feeling when that happens. Trout gold for our Angels owner, James B. Congrats, James. Seven more boxes coming up for you folks in double B. A small hatchet would work. We'll have to go out to my shed for that. Pull out seven out of here. What series to collect? If you're just collecting one, that's a tough question. It's either going to be update or series two. I'm trying to get both of them whenever I find them. Like when I go out to uh, Walmart looking for Tops Holiday next week, because our Walmart around here, we're a week behind you guys. It sucks. But. When I go out next week looking for Topps Chrome update and um, Topps Holiday, I'll be picking up Series 2 whenever I see it. Better base rookies. Man, that's so much easier using that toenail file. Mark says, that was me with the toenail. Well, you just saved me some time and some pain. Asa says, anyone else misses old scissors Eric used to use? 
<laughs> that was so, uh, I don't know. I had these big old pair of scissors and sometimes it'd be safety scissors. And then people started sending me some box cutters and I switched over to those. Probably a little more professional, I'd imagine. Joe iPhone says, smash that like button. Thank you, Joe. Jesus Sucre, gold out of 2019, Austin Riley. Can you make a video of your personal collection? That's a great question, Wrigley, but my collection is so disorganized that I don't know if it's ever going to get made. I would love to do that. And Patreon said, I pre-ordered a lot of 2019 Topps Holiday. How many boxes did you pre-order? I think someone here said the limit is 10. So... Sucre is sugar in French. That's interesting. Thanks for that tip. I guess that would be easier to pre-order the boxes and just get them sent to you by Walmart than having to run around. It's always the worst. Is you go way out of your way to go to a Walmart, you run in there to look and see if they have the new release of cards, and they don't, and you just drove like 30 minutes out of your way for nothing. Waste all that gas. That's... Probably going to be, be me next week. J.D. Martinez. Vladdy home run. How do you all like Topps Chrome this year? Topps Chrome update was pretty cool. I bought one box for a preview video, and it ended up having a Lucas Voigt Auto in it, which is pretty awesome. was not really expecting that. I think I said one in 10 boxes on the video, but somebody corrected me and said it's actually like one in six boxes that you get an autograph. So much better odds than I stated there. All right, here's our next pack. David said, I ordered 20 holiday, but canceled because there isn't much value in the SPs. Yeah, that's true. You get those... Snowflake Parallels, I'm, I'm assuming those will be back. The Acuna Jr. bat down Snowflake Parallel with the Sparkle was a pretty nice one. That's got some value. That's probably the only one of any value in that set from last year. I mean, you got some other ones in there that are going to be pretty decent. Like, I'm pretty sure Soto's in there as well. Keston Hira short print. There we go. Keston Hira short print for a Brewers owner. Get that one in a sleeve. The short prints are players with Santa hats on, really? That's pretty interesting. There's going to be people out there that love that. Here's the uh, short print code. See, 55. Right there, that very last, last two digits that you can read. 55. Keston here, a short print. Nice card. Short print means there's a lot less of them produced, and it was short, short print, not a lot. Print run. Small print run. So they're a lot more rare than your typical base card. I mean, your typical base card can still be worth a few bucks if it's a good card. I don't know if we're ever going to see another Mike Trout 2011 Tops update, but... Yeah, that was the wrong Soto. That was the uh, pitcher Soto that you saw in the gold. Not the one we wanted. David Johnson heard SSP autos in the hobby and jumbo are supposedly limited to five to ten each. That's it. That's not a lot of them out there. The SPs are typically a different picture. That's usually how you know what it is. Just from seeing so many of these uh, tops update. Eventually, you, you see, okay, that's I uh, don't see that one too often. Do I collect hockey cards? No, do not collect those. Peter Lambert, gold. Pete Alonzo, rainbow. That's a nice one for our Mets owner. Garrett Cole's warming up. Look out, Garrett Cole coming out of the bullpen. All right. Uh, Garrett Cole might be good for about two innings. You might think, Garrett Cole, he just started like two games ago. What's he doing back? Well, starting pitchers always have a side session in between their starts. So they go every five days, but every like second day or third day, they go out to the bullpen. They usually throw like 50 pitches or so uh, under the watchful eye of their pitching coach. And um, in situations like this, Garrett Cole just didn't throw a bullpen. So he's got about 50 bullets saved up that he can just use in the game. So I'm thinking he might be good for two innings. Maybe only one. We'll see. 
I would have liked to see Garrett Cole on the mound to finish off the World Series, kind of like how the Red Sox put Chris Sale out there to finish it up last year. That would be pretty sick to see Garrett Cole go out like that, finish off his Astros career. I, I don't think he's going to resign with the Astros unless they want to offer $250 bucks over, like, I don't know, eight years. Seven years, maybe. I wonder what Cole's going to get. He's definitely going to get over $200 million total in his contract. Big hit so far. Keston here. We had a $200 Keston Hira out of 76. We've had several relics. No autographs yet. But since hanger boxes are retail, it's not really to be expected. I was hoping we'd get some, but none yet. Joey Votto, 2008 Topps rookie card. That's an iconic card. You can buy that card for a couple bucks. B Fishing says, thanks for my peat pool, man. B Fishing, you're welcome. Ben F. with the Pete Alonso. Make sure you guys check out B Fishing's channel. Hey, Johnny Bench, playing some golf. That's the first time I've seen that one. Let's check out the back of it. There's the stats, and you can see that the number on it, short print, 55. Very nice Johnny Bench. I don't think I've seen that one yet. That one goes to the red zoner, which is... Dennis A, congrats on the Johnny Bench. <laughs> Playing some golf, enjoying his retirement. If I'm not mistaken, Johnny Bench has like a really young kid that might be under the age of like four. And he's an old dude too, so he's one of those guys that is starting a family very late in life. I want to say I heard an interview with him and he was talking about having like a his own kid. His David Johnson said his wife is hot. That might be why. She's probably like 25 years old. So having a, a young kid kind of like uh, definitely makes sense now. Next. Two boxes left for this round to break double B. Kendall says, I called it Nationals in seven. We shall see. Yeah, you got to check the back, Justin. SSPs are 57. Check your code on the back. 57 is obviously the one you want. But 55 is still not bad. Usually those ones that have the 55 are like $5 to $10 cards on eBay. Short prints. There's Rymel Tapia. Willie Stargell, 64 tops. Joey Gallo, that's... Kevin Joe says, I'm going to miss 2019 Tops. It's been a fun year. Yeah, 2019 Tops is going to give way come, what is it, February 2nd or something like that? And um, we're going to have a new modern design. The new cards look very modern. I don't know if you saw the design or not. I used to have a bunch of the those, like, promotional cards laying around. I think I threw them all away. Out of those 1984 tops, um, silver packs, they had all those promotional cards in there for 2020 tops, and I think I threw them all away. Very modern design, though. Papa J Cards says, Hello, Eric. Hope all is well. Love what you do. Been without internet due to the fires in Northern California. We are safe and all good, but was trying to get to 400 by tomorrow night. You need 18. Thank you very much, Papa J. I'm glad to hear that you guys were safe and sound. Uh, let's keep all of the folks out in California in our thoughts and prayers. It's got to be a, a scary time out there with those wildfires uh, all over the place. If you guys would like to help out Papa J, just click on that super chat. He only needs 18. And, um... Yeah, we've got over 500 folks in here watching right now. I really appreciate all you guys being here. Got some stiff competition tonight with the World Series going on. Game 7, the last baseball game of the year. Freddie Galvis Gold. There's a Vladdy Jr. And some base cards. Jason's got you, Papa J. So Jason just subbed you up. Thank you very much, Jason. Bosdesnose says, first time commenter, long time watcher. Hi from Australia. Well, welcome. That's awesome. Glad to have you here. 
Feel free to comment anytime. We do have a few viewers from Down Under. And one of these days I'm planning on visiting uh, Australia. I don't know when it's going to be because it's very expensive to fly there, but I would love to get down there and check out your Australian Baseball League. All right, so we're on to the next round there. Break double C. Here's all the folks in break CC in honor of CC Sabathia. Here's our first box. Philly Fan Cars 27 says, Love watching your vids. Keep up. Well, that's not going to work. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much, Philly. Really appreciate that. Make sure you guys take a minute and check him out. And uh, what? Austin Farmer. Not sure if you saw my text in the chat earlier. No, I didn't about this. Josh Hamilton facing third-degree felony. What did he do? I hope it was... Um, oh, man, that's that's not good. I hope the child's okay. I hope it... Uh, I, don't know. I mean, any kind of abuse is terrible. Hopefully he beat his dog. Oh, boy. Hopefully the uh, that's that's awful. I mean Hamilton has had his demons ever since being drafted. Wow, close fist hit his daughter on the leg. Roid rage. I know he had like a life coach there for um, throughout his years in Texas when he started to kind of maximize his potential. He had a life coach that was with him like every second of the day just because he would always find himself in situations kind of like getting himself into trouble with um, substance abuse and other things. So uh, maybe he doesn't have that influence in his life to help him. Hopefully he can get the help he needs. That's, that's, that's terrible news. But we've got a short print right there. And Carpin Jr., Cal Ripken Jr. short print. There's the back. You can see it is numbered 55. Tough to see right there, but it's right there. Robin, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Brian says, go Astros. It'd be cool if you could put up like a quick poll on like a live stream. Like, who are you pulling for, Astros or, or Nats? I feel like it's probably pretty 50-50 in here. Next box. Jordan pulled the Keyboom SSP. What do we have for Friday? Friday hasn't been planned yet, but it might just be a flashback Friday and do some um, older cards or older cases. And Papa J says we th we did it. Thank you very much. You got the uh, you are the best, and thank you all for the support. Stay tuned for a giveaway that's coming up soon from Papa J Cards. Congrats on reaching your goal there. I really appreciate your support. And uh, thank you guys for helping out a fellow content creator there, Papa J. Great dude. Make sure you check out his channel if you haven't already hit that sub button. And now's your chance. And there's no hits in that one. As long as you don't do Tops Kids on Fridays. Yeah, don't have to worry about us doing Tops Kids. I kind of feel like a lot of you guys hate that set, although I, I didn't never really minded it. I know my brother loves it, and I also like it. But I've heard the feedback from you guys. So we'll be avoiding that one, saving it for a rainy day. Best pull so far, Keston here out of 76 is probably the best one. We've also pulled quite a few short prints. Here comes the good stuff. We pulled a few nice gold rookies of Vladdy and um, Alonso. Also an Alonso rainbow. Series cards with the headline, brutalized. Wow, that's that's very powerful language there. That's awful, man. 
I feel like without baseball, I don't know. He needs to he needs to find something to. I don't know. It sucks. I'm sure he will um, definitely be facing some kind of penalty there, Randy. If I'm not mistaken, he's no longer married to his wife, so I'm I'm sure he will lose custody of the child for sure. And uh, let's see what we got here. Here's the good JT Rail Muto out of 50. There's the back. Dave says, let's talk about some positive stuff. MLB offseason starts tomorrow. Yeah, looking forward. It's going to be uh, all the free agent hoopla is going to be coming up. Who's going to sign where? Who's going to be traded? 2 nothing Astros, says Philly fan. Uh-oh, Nats fans. You might be getting a little nervous now. You got Garrett Cole coming in possibly soon. Zach Greinke, how about him stepping up? Pretty interesting fact that the road team has won every single game of the World Series. Every single game. Never happened before that the road team has won every game. In every sport, it's never happened. In the NHL, in the NBA, in baseball, there's never been a seven-game series where the road team has won every single game. Kevin Jones is calling a Soto three-run shot. That would be pretty epic. And then, the uh, obviously, the Astros would have a chance to answer. Pete Alonso, 84. Pretty nice. Patrick Corbin, blue, if I'm not mistaken. These are not numbered, and they're not. Still a cool little parallel. Scherzer's at 98 pitches. So he gritted it out, gave them... That's a pretty good start. Two runs, that's a quality start. But if the Nationals can't hit, he's still going to get settled with that loss. Paul says, John Hudak could come out of retirement and pitch for the Astros at Game 7. I'm sure that the uh, Nats fans would love to see that one. Good old John Hudak. Oh, Austin Farmer, just remember you got a test run. That's always awful, right? Like, you're all like, you're all wound down for the night. You're ready to, you know, kind of turn it in. Just enjoy the rest of your night. And then, whoops, I've got a test tomorrow. Used to remember those days. Paul says your brother would be in awe to see John Hudak come out of retirement. Bob Clemente, Roto Clemente, 62 tops design. Willis says, hey, Eric, I was opening triple threads in my last video, and I pulled a card that was damaged. Will tops take it back or send me another one? Willis, um, I'm pretty sure that they will replace that card. Reach out to Tops. It might take them like a couple weeks to get back to you. Um, their customer service is a little bit slow um, to get responses back. But my understanding is that they will replace it, especially for like Triple Threads. That's a pretty nice uh, higher-end product. So we got a hit. Jose Abreu from the White Sox. That one goes out to our White Sox owner, which is Robert M. Congratulations, Robert M., and by the way, thank you very much, Willis, for your support. Appreciate that. Jose Abreu piled up the RBIs this year, that's for sure. Good season for him. Let me just put some of these cards down in their box. Best hit so far was a Keston Hira out of 60s, 76, $200 card. Finding the short prints, but not finding the autos. We've got the short prints, we've got the relics. No autos yet. The autos are kind of a tough pull. And there's the odds again on the back. Maybe we'll find, hopefully, at least a few of them. Hopefully, if we do find an auto, it's not like a Rowdy Telez. Will Tops replace the sorry value packs from Target where every card is dinged? They might. Yeah, they might. There's like um, sometimes with tops you get stuff and it's dinged up. Like Kevin was just in here and I sent him a pack of 2019 tops update. I sent him probably I think 12 packs, and the only pack with the damage was the 19 update. So that means it was on tops end. If if every one of his cards was uh, dinged up, that would mean something happened within the shipment process. There's Andrew Nizer. 
Where's the Bray you gonna sign? I don't know. I have to think about that. Be interested to see if any of the uh, free agents go to the Pirates. Although if probably we're just gonna end up with bums that are trying to work their way back. Like uh, you know, guys that have no other offer, like Melky Cabrera at the end of their career. Those kind of guys. I mean, Cabrera did okay this year, but that's kind of like the the type of free agent that the Buccos will pick up. Dante says, I would love to help you with the breaking and sorting process. That'd be awesome, Dante. I'll tell you what, the sorting process definitely um, takes a lot of time. I, um, I've been paying a sorter to do all these. I just, um, let me see how much I've paid him so far. Probably paid him about 500 bucks for the Tops update so far to sort them all out. Probably comes out to about 25 an hour, I think. I paid him uh, 25 bucks for each round of A through J. I, I was paying him by the card. And um, then for the jumbo breaks, I paid him 1687 per round. And um, if he wants to do these breaks, it'd be 1250 a round. We've got Nick Senzel, gold, rookie debut. Let's put that one in a sleeve. That one's for the Reds, Jason W. Yeah, it's about 25 an hour. It takes him about an hour to get it. 2,000 cards done. I taught him my sorting process, which makes it a lot faster. I bet you I could do 2,000 cards in about 40 minutes. What's the minimum wage in our state? 750. Oh yeah, sorting cards is so monotonous. It's really, it's really monotonous. Oh, yeah, for sure, Brian. I could do 2,000 cards in under an hour for sure. I, I should do a video on it, do a little challenge. Have like a timer in the corner. Speed it up real fast. I can, I can definitely, from doing, all the, from doing all, the, all the sorting for like over a year. All right, so we have seven more boxes for the folks in break CC. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's seven fifty an hour. You use a sorting tray? I don't I don't do sorting trays. Hey Lucas! Lucas B with a one hundred dollar donation says it's almost been too long since I last super chatted. Lucas, thank you very much, man. I really appreciate that. Make sure you guys check out Lucas's channel there. Click on that uh, very generous super chat. With the Cubs icon, I can't really see too closely on my screen. Someone's getting doused with Gatorade in that uh, avatar. Click on that, check out his channel, and uh, support Lucas. Really appreciate that, man. I've got some stuff that I want to send to you, but I've been doing Patreon packages all week. So I will be getting that out, hopefully, by this weekend. Um, I'm almost done with my Patreon packages. I have a few more tiers to get out. I'm trying to get everything out by Friday which looks like it should happen. We're off work on Friday, no school. It's a clerical day, so whatever's left I need to send out, I'll just probably work on it after I get my grades done in, in school. Probably the $4 tiers will be the last ones to go out. I really appreciate that, Lucas. Very, very generous support. Hopefully you're enjoying your Wednesday night, halfway through the week. You're probably enjoying the World Series. Looks like it's a pretty good game, 2 nothing right now. People have been updating me on what's going on. Supposedly Garrett Cole is in the bullpen. Pat says McDonald's makes high enough margins they can pay their employees well. That's good. Top of the six. I really hope they save Garrett Cole for the last out. Like, yeah, Roberto Zuna, I know he's your closer and everything, but put Garrett Cole out there. Oh, it's 725. Corey, 
Corey looked it up for us. Thank you very much. I, I knew it was seven something because I know some of my students have said that they make seven fifty or whatever. So I assumed it was around there. I remember back in the days when I was making minimum wage as a teenager. Well, I'd, actually, I thought I was a big shot because I made five twenty five an hour when the minimum wage was five fifteen. So I was actually above minimum wage by a dime. I was like, yeah. Talking to my buddies that are getting five fifteen. I'm like, yeah, I get five twenty five. Like all cocky about it. <laughs> five twenty five an hour. Wow, that's that's really tough to live off of nowadays. As a kid, I guess, I mean, I just saved it all up. Ended up buying a car with it within a year. I think I saved like $6,000 after a year of working at Burger King. Bregman, gold. Trout, rainbow, pretty good pack. Mercado. Someone said they're making twenty five fifty an hour. That's pretty good. Joe Yankee made four fifty. Kevin made four twenty five, and all the money went to cards. Yeah, depending on where you're at in the country, some of the areas have, like Randy said, fifteen fifty nine per hour. Twins, we've pulled a lot of relics, not a lot, but maybe about like five six relics, and uh, no autos yet. Finding a lot of short prints. Austin makes eight dollars an hour, and all his money goes to cards and super chats. Thank you, Austin. Appreciate you being here, man, and helping out with the moderations. R Roan got fired from McDonald's when you were 16. What'd you get fired for? There's the Otani. No longer consider that an error card. Uncorrected error. I'm not going to... I would suggest if you have that, sell it right now, because before long, it's going to be like a dollar card. Yep, Dante, it's all one, uh, one, one word there. Kevin Jones says, lots of McDonald and Zeal rookies. Oh, boy. Yeah, 1990. That was the year of Ben McDonald and Todd Zeals. Wish I had all that money back. What letter are we on? We're on CC right now. Oh, we've got two boxes left. Daniel bought his first home in 2010 while making $14 an hour. That's pretty good, man. That's the American dream, being able to buy your own house, own your own house outright. Three thirteen says, I work for Tops. They pay me in cards. I guess that... That would have been awesome back in the day. I would have definitely worked for cards as a kid. I don't know what the heck I would be doing. Granky's through six innings. What a start for Granky. Jono says, I remember getting the Todd Zeal 90 Donruss as a kid, and man, that was a hot card. Yeah, Todd Zeal. I remember going to the Carbon Fire Hall and just seeing like Todd Zeal's out on every table for like five to ten bucks a piece. You remember the Carbon Fire Hall? We went to a card show there once. I only remember going to one card show there. For whatever reason, like, I think our parents tried to shield us from card shows because we basically never went to them. And if you go and look at Beckett Magazine from, like, the late 80s and early 90s, there's a card show every weekend within probably, like, 30 minutes of us. But I don't think they wanted us to go to them because of all the money we would spend. And I feel like um, whenever we would go, we'd like to take our time and look at everything. And I think it was pretty boring for my dad. Kevin Jones says, Greg Jeffries' 88 Donruss was so hyped too. Crazy. That was another bust, Greg Jeffries. And people always get real mad when I call Greg Jeffries a bust. Because like, well, he was an all-star in 1994 with X amount of hits. I'm like, I don't mean it like that. But people were talking him up like he was going to be the next big thing. Slash, like they're talking him up like he was going to be like Ken Griffey Jr., like the Ken Griffey Jr. hype of the uh, 1989 into the early 90s. 
but he was, um, Greg Jeffries was a bus. I remember reading an article about like how hard Greg Jeffries trained and how he would like go to his swimming pool and take like 500 swings underwater. And that's how his bat speed was so fast because he would swing a bat underwater. <laughs> I guess it didn't end up helping him in the long run. I mean, he was, he was a solid player. I agree with that, Austin, but definitely not a superstar. Kevin remembers the story about him swinging underwater. I don't know where I read that at. I read that years and years ago, and that stuck with me. That that stuck with me because, like, maybe I need to get a swimming pool and start swinging, swinging the bat underwater just because of the, the resistance from the water. I guess it's supposed to make your bat speed a lot faster, according to Greg Jeffries. Yeah, Phil Plantier is another one, Roan. Everybody wanted to fill Plantier cards. My brother and I actually went to a card store called The Card Store, and they actually had Phil Plantier cards in the showcase for, um, oh, I don't know, a premium, like four bucks a piece. We're on the break double D right now. DD, as in DD Gregorius. Then we have break EE -E and FF, so three more rounds. 15 boxes per round. Nigel Wilson. Yeah, I remember Nigel Wilson from 1993. Everybody wanted Nigel Wilson, LeVon Hernandez, David Need, all those guys. I think LeVon Hernandez a little bit later, but it was David Need and um, Nigel Wilson. Todd Van Poppel craze. Yeah, he was on like the front of Beckett and everything. David Johnson says, everyone give their full support for break DD. She's going to be epic. Hopefully, this is the uh, break that pulls a big auto. My uh, my brother says, dust was all over everything, and Phil Plantier was in the showcase for five bucks. Yeah, that, I remember the, uh, the, the creepy curtain, too, with, like, that blue curtain. Like, what was hiding behind that? That store definitely, a lot of the stuff hadn't been touched in years. He said a lot of his sales were online, and it showed for sure. Pat Listash was a big one, too, back in, like, 92. Rob Ventura craze. Seafront traded Dave Need autograph card for a John Smoltz auto when he was a kid. That's got to hurt. Hey, everyone, everyone's had trades like that that have backfired. Whenever you have trades, no matter what it's in, there's always going to be a winner and a loser. Um... At least some of the time. I remember that. I got an 84 Mattingly Fleer for a buck. <laughs> All the sleeves were falling apart and disintegrating in my hands as I was looking through them. I, I forget if, if I put it in slow motion when I was looking through the sleeves as they were disintegrating and like sparkling in the, in the sun as they were falling to the ground like all the, the, the pieces of uh, the plastic. Definitely an interesting card store. No, T Dog, that was at an antique mall. It was like an, an, a junky antique store. Yeah, there's like a like a Whitey Ford or something like laying on the ground. And I picked it up and I was like, How much do you want for this? And he accused me of like bending it. And I was like, Are you, why would I bend a card and then want to buy it? Like you had it sitting on the ground within all this trash. I'm surprised that place is even still standing up. The guy obviously didn't want to really part with anything either. It was just mounds and mounds of, of crap. Like, there's a million cards in there. Yeah, it was a place in Pittsburgh, like downtown Pittsburgh. He had over a million cards. It looked like um, probably the, the floor is going to, like, collapse, and all those cards are going to come falling through the floor at some point. There's a Vladi 150 emblem. But, yeah, it was pretty bad. All his cards were way overpriced. I think I actually took that out where he was accusing me of bending the card. It was um, pretty ridiculous. Next box. Pat saw that video. He was a hoarder, not a seller. Yeah, he definitely was. Stuff stacked up to the uh, the ceiling on all floors.
it's like real 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 hard to find parking that day too because there's like a penguins game or like a monster monster jam monster truck rally i think it was a monster truck rally at the, right across the street you take out too much stuff where the other person's being a d word well see you know what i've I do do that a lot of the time now because I don't want people to make themselves look bad on any videos. Ever since that one card show where the guy was trying to rip me off real bad by selling me like crease cards and oh yeah, this Roberto Clemente with a huge crease in it, hundred bucks. Ever since um, I did that video, it made the made the one guy angry about it, and so ever since I've decided not to show people in a negative light. Just I edit out all that kind of stuff. Try to focus on the positive of every every place. I mean, obviously, if someone's a complete jerk, I probably won't even include like any of their footage in there at all to give them any support. They're Marcus Stroman Gold, Josh Van Meter, sixty-two. Clemente, Nick Senzel, 84. Michael Chavis, is that a short print? I think it might be. Let's double check. That indeed is a Michael Chavis short print. There we go. Chavis, thank you, Robert. There's a Pete Alonso. The Chavis short print goes out to the Red Sox owner, by the way, which is Heather. Congrats. Michael Chavis is going to be a good one, it looks like. How many cards are in the set? Is it 300 or 330? They, they always switch it up on me. At least 300, probably 300. J. Mill says, you got me into collecting baseball cards. Had stuck to football for years. Well, welcome back, J. Mill. That's awesome. All right, everyone's confirming it is 300. There were some years there it was 330. What's the highest super chat we ever got? It was 301. 301. Pretty crazy. T Dog is going to see Victor this weekend. We'll have fun there. You know what, T Dog? You could probably just like hang out there for hours and talk to Victor. He's he's a conversation machine. He's so fun to talk to. He has lots of stories about everything related to the hobby. He's got stories that he could probably, you know, keep you there all day and tell you all the kinds of stuff that he's seen in the hobby. Awesome dude. Hopefully we can do a video there in November or December. He said he wants to do one then. I got a little bit of a sneak peek of a store back in the last flea market video. The only thing I bought was at Victor's store the whole weekend, so I had to include that, of course. Got those Ronald Acuna Jr. rookies and the um, Christian Yelich. Chili says, do I like SGC, PSA, or BGS? Personally, I'm a probably a PSA guy. Jamil says, this is the inning for the Nats. If they whiff here, that's going to be all she wrote. Have we pulled any autos yet? No autos yet. It's been a lot of short prints, about a half dozen relics, lots of golds. Michael's turning in for the night. Well, thanks for being here, man. Hopefully you have a great rest of your week. Next box for the folks in DD. So our last two breaks are very Yankees. Yankee-centric. We had CC, break CC for CC Sabathia, and I'll break DD for DD Gregorius. Austin's missing all those silver pack Fraser cards. Those, so, those silver packs are definitely pretty cool. Uh, that was a good idea that I had. Sometimes... I have bad ideas, sometimes good ones, but I think pulling all of these silver packs aside for their own separate video was definitely a great idea. There's a vintage stock. Garrett Cole hopefully gets the save in the World Series, Game 7. What's my favorite baseball movie? I love Field of Dreams also. That's a great one.
Also, I love The Natural. That's another good movie with Robert Redford. All right, so next box. Mage League 2 is a great one. Can't forget about that one. Fever Pitch is a great movie. Run reminded me a lot about myself being a teacher, and that's kind of like how I was back in the day going to games like crazy for the Buckos. Back when I first became a season ticket holder, I went to every game and went to batting practice and stayed at all the games too until like 11 p.m. every night. And then once I met my wife, um, I started just leaving after batting practice so I could go and spend time with her and then had a family come along and everything and now it's no baseball ever. No, John, I never watched Eastbound and Down. That's one that I need to watch because I heard it's pretty funny. It's probably on Netflix. I could probably check it out on there. All right, next case here of eight. Pull out the last seven for you folks and break DD. Prior to the Yankees, I think I saw that once, but I can't remember the plot line of it. And Matera says, have you heard of dead ball baseball with dice? Allows you to play any team in history against any team. You should make a video of it. I'll have to keep that in mind. Dead ball baseball with dice. Pretty cool. That'll be kind of fun. Maybe play against Olivia or my brother or my wife or my friend Joe from Joe's Card Corral. My brother says that he's got the series of Eastbound and Down. That's awesome. I'll have to check that out over the uh, over the holiday break. Have some time to watch it. I'm really looking forward to November being here. I always love the beginning of each month. I don't know if it's just things die down a little bit. End of each month is pretty crazy. All right, so here's the... Did you ever give that Tom Prince plaque to Joe? No, I haven't had the chance. We haven't seen him. We've, we've, you know, reached out to him and offered him to come along a couple times, but he's had other plans. Like this past weekend, he was uh, staying overnight in Pittsburgh. Austin Allen out of 50. Next time I see him, I'll give it to him. I have to get his reaction. Uh-oh, World Series 2-1 to one now. When and what's the next break? Well, the next break for sure. We'll do one on next Wednesday. That might be the, the Chrome Update break. Next week, we're going to be breaking two items. It's going to be Chrome Update and Panini Flawless. And heck, maybe even Topps Holiday, because if I can get my hands on enough boxes of those to do a break on them. What, did Rendon hit a dinger? Looks like he did. Oh, yeah, Rendon's going to get the MVP. He started off the series pretty slow. But then five RBIs the other night. Another dinger tonight. You gotta, you gotta give it to him. And uh, he's gonna, he's gonna be a free agent too after this game. So Rendon's gonna be out there getting over two hundred million dollars from somebody. Wonder who's gonna sign him. Hey, Johnny Bench short print again. That's our second Bench short print after. I opened 40,000 cards of uh, Hobby and Jumbo and had not pulled that card, and now we get two out of the hanger. Kevin Jones says, I'm with you, Eric. Still big on Freddie Freeman. Yeah, Freddie Freeman is definitely on the Hall of Fame track, I think. If you can pick up his 2011 Topps card for a few bucks, I would I would definitely go in and get that. For a while there, that was like a dollar card. Now people are kind of starting to appreciate Freeman a little more. Yeah, what was up with Rendon last night after his home run after that terrible call? Did you see his facial expression? <laughs> he had literally no expression at all. He's just like, looked like he was like sitting in a library or something while he's rounding the bases. Why does Soto do a little dance after each ball? I noticed that. They call it the Soto Shuffle. It's actually pretty funny to watch. It makes his at-bats like, you know what? 
I like that kind of stuff. That brings a little more color to the game, and um, it makes the games more interesting to watch, and it makes every Juan Soto at bat. He's starting to become an, a must-watch at bat, Juan Soto. All that extra movement in the box after a pitch. Looking out at the pitcher, sticking his tongue out at him. Adjusting himself in the box while looking directly in the eyes of the pitcher. Like, no one does that except for him. He's definitely becoming a character. And I, I really think that this year is the year he's, you know, reaching star status. <laughs> J-Mill says he's sticking his tongue out as I say that. <laughs> yeah, he does that all the time. Like, I noticed that about him. Like, why is he sticking his tongue out at the pitcher? And Steve G says, hey, just joined in. Any hits? Can you recap? Steve, thank you very much. Uh, no autos yet, but about a half dozen relics. And um, some nice numbered cards. Lots of parallels. Gold, blue, 1976. The, the biggest hit value-wise was Keston Hira out of 76, the Independence Day. About a $200 card. Cranky's being taken out now, says Cole. Bye-bye, Granky. There's Dylan Moore gold. Jeff Bagwell, 1991 Tops traded. Iconic card. Jose Suarez. Yeah, it seems like a lot of people feel like the umpiring has really gone against the Nationals this series. Like, just from, like, the bad calls at the plate with Garrett Cole getting, like, extra strikes, like, very generous strikeout calls to the play at first base last night. It just seems like the umpires have it out for the Nationals. Obviously, that's not the case. It's just, you know, how the optics look. But it all came to a head last night with Davey Martinez just going crazy out there in between innings. Got ejected. Miller Park's going to be renamed. You're not ready for that? What's it being named now? Eli, not watching the Fall Classic at the moment. I'll catch the last inning or two after this break. We got two more rounds after break DD. And we've got a hit. It's a Jorge Polanco again, our second Jorge Polanco relic. This one goes out to our Twins owner, which is Michael M. Congrats, Michael M., on the Polanco. Get that in a sleeve for you. Something insurance related, that's going to be annoying. I hate those corporate names like that. I mean, Miller Park was a corporate name to begin with after Miller Beer, but it just, it didn't sound that corporate because Miller is kind of a common name. But if it's like something, something insurance field, that's going to be kind of annoying to say. All right, here we go. Two boxes left. Dave says, I saw that no one likes the Marlins in these breaks. Yeah, I'll tell you what. The Marlins were the last team to sell for all these rounds. They were only like $6 <laughs> with free shipping, and they were still a tough sell. There's like Harold Ramirez rookie card. You never know. Maybe Harold Ramirez will end up being a good one. Maybe he won't, but a lot of people are down on the Marlins, unfortunately. That's good if you're a Marlins fan, but the problem is there's hardly any of them out there right now. Elvis Luciano. Gold out of 2019. Kevin Jones says, I have a ton of Marlins Tops Heritage High number cards. That's Sometimes you just got to put those unknown rookies away in a box and then hope they break out, and then that's the fun part. Go try to dig them out. Marlins jerseys are dirt cheap. I think everything's dirt cheap, Marlins-wise. Baseball in South Florida just has not really worked out the way Major League Baseball envisioned back in 1993 and 1998 when they expanded first into Miami with the Marlins and then 98 into Tampa Bay with the then Devil Rays. Another dinger? What? Three to two? Oh, boy. Kendrick. Ichiro short print. There we go. Check out the Ichiro signing a ball for a kid. I actually tried to get Ichiro to sign a ball 
for me and Olivia, and he totally big leagued us um, probably like three years ago. It was there's it was a no batting practice day, and he was out doing his extensive routine where he stretches for like thirty minutes, and uh, then he plays catch with his translator. And there wasn't too many people. There was maybe like six people there. And uh, Olivia had a ball and asked him for an autograph. And he just walked right on by. It would have been pretty cool to get an each auto for her. But he's a busy guy. I'm sure he had something he had to do, I guess. Seems to be one of these guys that has a routine and sticks to it. Doesn't want to get caught up signing autographs for... I don't know, probably would have only been like a minute or two, but I'm sure everybody in the stadium would have ran over to try to get an Ichiro auto. We did end up getting the ball that he was playing catch with, though, thrown by his trainer. Not from him, but from his trainer. So I guess that was pretty cool. That is it, by the way, for break DD. Now we're moving on to... Break EE. -E -E. So this is, we had CC for CC Sabathia. We had DD for DD Gregorius with these double letters, I guess. And now EE, -E, what? Edwin Encarnacion, I guess, is the player that comes to mind first with those initials. Here's your new case. Get it opened up. Two more of these. Two more rounds, and then catch the last couple innings of the World Series. Paul still loves the fat packs the best. He pulled a Honus one of one. That's pretty sick. Dolly Parton break. I don't know too much about her. She was a little before my time. Let's see, we got something colorful there in the middle. Let's see what it is. Kevin Biggio. Is Archive's retired player signature series worth it? I don't know, man. It's real risky. It's a risk reward type thing. About 80% of 70 to 80% of the time, you're going to get a Mike Lieberthal or a Mike Hargrove or a Tim Wallach or someone like that. There's a lot of. Former all-stars that are common players in there. Let's just put it that way. Like, yeah, Tim Wallach was good or whatever. Mike Lieberthal had, like, one good year. Coco Crisp. Lots of those types of players. I mean, you do have some Hall of Famers in there. But, like I said, 80% of the time it's going to be one of the... Uh, basically, you pay $40, something for a box. Most of the time you're going to get a Phil Garner or, you know, like a $5 card. So that is a that's really like um, the closest thing to buying a lottery ticket that I can think of with um, these boxes on the market right now. Mickey Rivers, Bill North. There is definitely some commons. Modern day signature series. Also, again, that's going to be more or less like a lottery ticket. Frankie Montas, Fernando Tatis Jr. Like, you'll pull your um, your Pete Alonso's here and there, but you'll also have a bunch of um, quote-unquote Tom... It's not Tom and common guys. Kevin Jones says, Top's kind of blew it on 2019 archives. Yeah, I was pretty pumped, like, last year. I, I remember 2018 archives signature series being really good. The one case that... I think we did one case of those last year, and... Um, out of the 20 boxes, I feel like there's eight one of ones, and it was pretty ridiculous and fun and everything. But this year was just, um, I don't know, kind of a letdown. Austin says, hopefully Eric and I will be in Allen and Ginter sets in the future. Eric for YouTube and Austin for a GM. That would be pretty awesome. Yeah, hopefully that would be pretty cool if they did like a YouTube su uh, subset. Obviously have like Bobby Crosby, number one for Dodger Films. Then have like Mighty Goat, number two. Have some other guys in there like uh, Fuzzy and um, I don't know maybe if, the, if they would consider me to be a complete honor. There's Christian Yelich, Yandy Diaz. Yeah, that would be pretty awesome. But I feel like they want people with like millions of subs and millions of followers on social media to get the word out about their products. So you have all these. I think the reason they do that is just to bring in a whole new audience of 
card collectors put in like um I don't know, like Harrison Ford, for example. I think he had a card in there. Get a whole bunch of Harrison Ford fans out there to buy some Allen and Ginter cards looking for his autos. I mean, it's not a bad idea. I'm glad they only do it with Allen and Ginter and it's not in every release. That would be a little bit much. Are you trying to do the MLB game at the Field of Dreams site? That would be pretty awesome, Field of Dreams, next year. I haven't given much thought to it yet. Um, I probably will end up not doing that. It's because I'm, I've kind of retired from the whole ball hawking scene and everything. I mean, maybe I'll go back to it when my supply of baseballs runs out because I send them off to Patreon patrons now every month. Yeah, that 50 signature book from Luminaries is a pretty sick one right there. I like the booklets a lot. Anytime we pull a booklet, I get super excited. Because you don't pull too many of those. Cole says, I just realized I haven't eaten anything today. That's not good. I had Eaton Park for dinner. Turkey club sandwich. Kevin Jones says, I sold all my Allen & Ginter non-sports cards in a week. I'll tell you what. Yeah, those non-sports cards, there's a big demand for that stuff. Like, I, I feel like the first, whenever I listed Allen & Ginter, the first one to sell immediately was the um, non-sports spots. And uh, the same person, like, gobbled all of them up. I forget who it was, but they picked them all up. And uh, I, I want to say they weren't they weren't cheap either. They're like $100 a round or something like that. Because the non-sports ones are really good for autographs. As we saw, like, uh, I, I forget what the, the non-sports person, I think, pulled like 22 autographs, according to Dragon Fan Tim. Who, by the way, Dragon Fan Tim, I think, was in the last round for the um, Tigers. He's in here somewhere. Yeah, Post Malone was another huge auto. Guys like that. It was a girl who bought most of them up, says Kevin. Yeah, it was. I forget her name, but I mean, I appreciate her support. She must have been after a certain player, or not player, but a certain subject. There's Nolan Ryan, short print. Good old Nolan. It's our second Nolan Ryan like that. Just Spitfire found a 1991 All-Star ballot. That's pretty awesome. That'd be cool to look over. Bring back a lot of memories from that era. All right, there's that pile done. Next box. We got Gregory Soto on the top. Kevin says most of the non-sports cards you sold to girls also, like the horses. Yeah, what was up with all the horses in that release? And Brian is waiting patiently for the Garbage Pail Kids Series 9 break. I'll be putting that up sometime tomorrow. Those will be by the stack, so there's 40... I believe there's 48 packs per box, and those boxes were in pristine condition, which is why they cost so much. $106 a box after tax. But a lot of the Garbage Pell Kid boxes, they have giant X-outs on them. They're called X-out boxes, and those are like Franken boxes because they just put all their... What would happen is stores would just put all their unsold packs back in a box and ship them back to the company with a big X on it. So those boxes aren't nearly as valuable. They're still pretty cool, but... And I think there's some value also to the box itself, like the empty box. When will I ship Tops update hobby? Seth? Um, probably next Monday, November 4th, looks like, um, according to eBay analytics, like they stay on me all the time, tell me when to ship stuff. It's really tough to keep up with, but I'm trying my best to, best to keep up with their ship times. Looks like November 4th is when I have to start shipping those out. Materva says, you were never allowed to collect garbage spell kids. Me either. I mean, I was allowed to, but my mom didn't know what I was buying until she found my collection one day and then, like, she told me how disappointed she was and made me feel really guilty and stuff. 
because I don't know, it's like kids eating their like boogers and stuff and just you know, like kind of like gross out stuff. Like compared to the stuff kids are subjected to nowadays, it's very, very tame. But she was not happy with that whatsoever. All right, we're moving on. We got a couple of cases left. Let's pan down a little bit. Get your marker out of the way. Kevin says, I got an Alonzo auto from my Patreon in Allen and Ginter. That's awesome. Congrats on that. Kevin Jones with the Pete Alonzo. I think that was Allen and Ginter. Was that last? No. How many months ago was that? I'm trying to get different boxes through or different releases through as they kind of come out. What I can, Whatever I can get my hands on. All right, so seven more boxes. Back in July, that's pretty awesome, man. That's a good one for sure. Did you keep it or did you end up selling it? That'd be a tough call there. Seven more boxes. And Jim pulled a Pete Alonso pink refractor. That's awesome. You sold it for 160. Mick is going as me for Halloween. How would you do that? <laughs> have to have like, maybe, I don't know, have like a camera on a tripod, tripod walk around with it and have cards in front of you. Yeah, for Halloween tomorrow, we're breaking garbage pail kids tomorrow night for Throwback Thursday. Two boxes of them. Jonathan Scope. Should be pretty interesting. Austin says, should I be Sabo tomorrow? I mean, Sabo would be an easy one to do. Just got to find some rec specs. Get a Reds hat. Everyone will know who you are. If you put a Reds hat on, red shirt, you don't even need like a red jersey, just a red shirt, a Reds hat, and some rec specs. Everyone's going to know, at least like everyone that collected cards, that you're Chris Sabo. j is going to go as Bryce in Arlington, Virginia. I'm sure that that'll go over well down there in national country. Got Carter Keeboom, rookie gold. Carter Ke Oh, double Keeboom. Keeboom rainbow. A lot of uh, communities around here are postponing their Halloween because we're supposed to have bad weather tomorrow. It's supposed to like rain all day and be a real crappy day. So a lot of communities are moving their trick-or-treat to Saturday, November 2nd, which would be great for the kids. You could double dip. Like in my school district, we have three uh, municipalities that kind of combine. Well, one of them is moving their trick-or-treat to Saturday, and the other two are staying on Thursday. So my students, if they want to, have a real easy time of just um, they could trick-or-treat on Thursday. Then they can trick-or-treat again, just go up the street a little bit. Walk up the street a few blocks and go again on Saturday. Yeah, some real crappy weather going through the, the uh, country right now. We've got a camo out of 25 coming up. It's Luis Sessa. Not too bad. Out of 25, there's the back. You can see 24, 25. And we got Thurman Munson. Not numbered, just a nice blue parallel. Still pretty cool. I wonder if that's another one that the pack searchers are looking for when they open up the tops of these boxes and look in, if you can see that blue on the side. Next box. I don't think I'm dressing up for anything as Halloween. I usually just walk around with my kids. And they dress up, and I just kind of stand on the street and just, um, you know, watch them go up and ring the doorbell and get their candy. Just kind of like chaperone them around. Javier Baez Gold. I remember as kids, my brother and I used to take pillowcases, trick-or-treating. That was always, you could always fit so much more in those. We would just grab a pillowcase, go out for the full two hours. And we'd come back and dump out all the stuff on the uh, living room carpet and kind of like organize it. Fun days. Pillowcases was the way to go. 
there's always someone out there that would use like a plastic bag, but you know, you can't fit it enough in a plastic bag. That's only if you're going for a couple houses. One year I dressed up as Andy Van Slyke. My mom made me a custom Andy Van Slyke jersey. I was probably like, I don't know, 11 or 12. I'm trying to think what else I went as. Um, I think most of the time we would just put on like a monster mask. We would just get a mask at like a, a store and just go as some like random monster. That was just the lazy way to do it, toss on a mask. J.D. Hammer Gold. Michael Brantley Rainbow Senzel. I think I probably stopped trick or treating around like what fourteen. Probably like eighth grade was probably the last time I went trick or treating. Matt one is the Undertaker in fifth grade. That's pretty awesome. Last thought was always a ninja. He should be John Watson for Halloween. Yeah, that would be funny. I thought about doing like a special Halloween video, but I don't think I have the time to do it. Mill 2K11, how's it going, man? Someone just said they were a taco in third grade. Yeah, those were always fun days, like dressing up for elementary school and going on parade. We saw that constipated about Josh Hamilton. The guy's got to get his stuff together. There's Roberto Clemente, 1960 design. And we have our first autograph. It's a 1984 Yankees hit of Thyro Estrada. It's only taken literally about 100 boxes. We found a good deal of relics. And now we have our first autograph, Thyro Estrada, for our Yankees owner, James B. Congratulations on that one. Retail's pretty tough to find autos in, as you have seen by the odds on the back of all these boxes. There's the back of that card, Thyro Estrada. Very, very nice. Like that one a lot. Put your brake letter on the back. That's EE. -E. As in, who else has EE -E initials besides Edwin Encarnacion? Not too many guys, that's for sure. E E A U H E N I O. No, that's not gonna work. Hey, there you go, Dave. Good one, Eduardo Escobar. Dave M with the point. Hey, Mill Two K Eleven. What's up, man? Says love these crappy packs with crappy autos. Keep them coming, Mill Two K. Thank you very much. Sorry that the. Uh, the autos aren't the best out of retail, but unfortunately, we had Panini push back their release. Today was supposed to be the Panini Flawless break, which um, would be pretty fun because um, it's like, it's those expensive briefcases, and they pushed it back a week on me, so we had a, an, an opening here, and I wasn't able to get Topps Chrome Update. I tried really hard to get Topps Chrome Update. I went around to seven targets, and it's just after going to seven of them, I just realized that somebody is beating me to the punch and probably went to every target in Pennsylvania and bought all of them. So, I mean, I did buy some off of eBay, but I have to wait for them all to come in. Just, you know, obviously I had to pay like an extra 10 to $15 per box, but... I figured that, you know what, I'm probably going to end up paying all that in gas, driving all over the place looking for them. So it's going to be equal in the end, but really tough to find those. We will be doing a break on those next week after I get them all in. With um, Topps Chrome updated, if you saw the preview video, you can find autos in there. I found a, I opened one mega box and found a Lucas Voigt auto, which was kind of unexpected. About one in six boxes, it sounds like, has an auto from Topps Chrome update. And uh, Seth opens cards, says, can you shout me out for my birthday? I haven't posted yet, but will soon. Seth opens cards. Happy birthday. You're four days behind me. That's awesome. Hopefully you're having a great day. And um, that was the last box for break EE. -E, so we're on to our last round. Break F, F, double F. Freddie Freeman. 
That's the the guy that comes to mind with those initials. I'm sure someone else will have another great FF um, acronym there. I mean, let's keep it clean. No Billy Ripken, 1989. Obviously, when I see those two letters, I think of the 89 Bill Ripken card because it always, um, you know, was listed as that in Beckett. Bill Ripken FF card. All right, so our final 15 boxes of the night. Let's get them all laid out. There's eight in the case, and then there's seven more right here. Oh, show the full list. You got it, man. Here's all the folks in break F. This probably will be the end of Top's update. I don't think there's any more. I don't really plan on doing like blaster box breaks or anything like that. So, I mean, they, they might appear again in a mixer break at some point. Robert says, flawless is absolutely awesome in basketball. Yeah, it'll definitely be a fun one. I hear it's supposed to be really good. We didn't break it last year, so it'll be my first time opening flawless hoping that it's um you know well worth it and it's a fun break i think i only have one case of it i don't have a lot of cases of flawless i i might try to get another one or two it is a really high-end product i i forget how much it is but i think it's approaching almost two thousand dollars a case really for for two boxes pete alonso jabs doing hoops that could be funny <laughs> There's Nick Senzel short print. I if I'm, you're talking about me doing basketball cards, that would be that would be hilarious because I don't know any basketball players whatsoever. I used to love playing basketball though, but I'm probably not as I, I mean I know I'm nowhere near what I used to be. I used to be able to be pretty decent at basketball. You start to get old and like you start to get stiff. Probably can't move around as well anymore. Being in my late 30s now, just be dunking on people all the time. Maybe on a nine foot hoop. I don't. I can't. I don't think I can dunk anymore. Even if I warmed up really well, I probably still I couldn't do it anymore. I used to be able to. A couple of years ago, I think I was. Uh, last time I dunked was probably like three or three years ago. Throwing down some volleyballs in the gym. But that was three years ago. James McCann. I probably, yeah, definitely have dunked some donuts. Kevin says he wishes I did football. The breaks would be so much fun. But I would butcher it, and then people would get mad at me, and then they would leave my channel in droves. What? He doesn't know who Demarius... Marcus is that's awful unsubbed so I don't want to get people mad or you just totally went right by a Ben Roethlisberger rookie card I, I don't know any players I'd have to do a lot of research I'd have to start watching games and Jason says I can't imagine Jabs doing anything other than baseball it's just his knack yeah I found my little Little corner here in the hobby. Just this is my comfort zone. So I'm sure there's other guys out there breaking football. Mrs. Jeffs would be furious. Yeah. What? You're doing football cards now too? Keston here gold. That's a nice one. Get that one sleeved up for our brew crew owner, Aaron. Anthony would buy A and G, Allen and Ginter if they had cricket players. Mill 2K says Jabs is baseball 101. He and the you guys in the chat are what keeps him coming back. Yep, definitely some fun chats break out in here. I think we we're just talking about our Halloween customs and traditions before you came in, Mill. All right, so let's see what's out of this next box. We've got about, oh, 11 boxes left after this. How tall am I? Six, four and a half. How do I feel about the Walgreens jumbo packs? Are they worth the five bucks? I haven't bought the, the, the jumbo packs of Topps Update. 
I mean, that's not a bad price. That's about what they, those are called fat packs. They're about the same at Walmart. Not a bad deal. It's actually a pretty good value. It's like 14.7 cents a card. One cent says the Halloween tradition in Ohio is rainy weather. Yeah, definitely had some rainy weathers here. I remember going trick-or-treating once when it was like flurrying out, some snowing a little bit. Yeah, I'm probably actually like 6'4 now, come to think of it, because you know how you shrink when you get older, like the cartilage in between your joints kind of like compresses. I've had, it's happened before, like, I don't know, like, my brother and I were in a, a restaurant. I don't know if he heard or not, but some guy's like, um, how tall are you? I'm like, uh, six, four. He's like, so am I. And he was like, it's probably like 67 year old guy. And he was obviously like four inches shorter than me. I was like, okay, maybe you were six, four. There's Corbin Martin black. That one is numbered out of two ninety nine. What hits have we gotten since the Abreu Relic? It's just been some relics here and there. Jorge Polanco twice. We had a Thyro Estrada autograph come out. That was our only autograph out of these. They guarantee a hit out of one in four packs. Some are relics and some are uh, autos from Chrome. Yeah, Chrome is definitely... Um, Pops Update Chrome is going to be a fun one. I'm trying to get to 100 boxes because I'd like to do five 20 box rounds. I think 20 boxes is pretty good. That way you're not getting like, if I did like a five box round or a 10 box round, there wouldn't be a lot of um, cards per team really per se. I still have to go through and break it all down and see how many, how many cards go to each team? We might have to combine some teams because some teams might not have any cards. Like the Marlins might not have any cards or some some teams might only have like one. There's Jacob DeGrom. That one is out of 2019. Nice gold one right there. Cole Tucker. Hey, we have a hit. It's an all-star game. Hat on backwards. That could be Frankie Lindor. Let's see who... No, that's going to be Dan Vogelback. His hat's not on backwards. It's just incredibly tight on his head and looks like it's backwards, but hey, Frankie Lindor looks like he's in the background, so Dan Vogelback from the Mariners. That one goes to Aaron M. Congrats, Aaron M. on that one. Yeah, it looks like he's not wearing the right size hat for sure. Um, it's not really fitting his giant head. He's got a Kevin Mench head. You guys might remember Kevin Mench from the Brewers. I think he had the largest head in baseball. I don't know if it was a record or not, but he had like an eight and something size circumference hat, which is like incredibly huge. Big old noggin on Kevin Mench. Also played for the Texas Rangers there for a while. He's long, long since been out of baseball, but... Let's see what else we've got coming up. Would a box of Panini Flawless for twelve fifty be a good price? A box? Like a single briefcase? I feel like that might be high because I want to say that I paid slightly under 2000 for my case, which would be like a, less than 1000 a box. I have to go back and check because I, I ordered this stuff far in advance, so... What I would say is just um, before you buy anything, like especially if you're gonna buy Flawless, make sure you do a little bit of research and check out all the other websites to make sure you're getting, you know, what's market value at least. Like check out Steel City Collectibles, check out Dave and Adams, check out Blowout Cards. Because um, if you see one on eBay, you might end up paying like way over what you could get it for on like Steel City Collectibles for. They're, they're all pretty much around the same price, but at least you will know what the going rate is. Mench was a blue hen. Yep. Kevin Mench, I remember him. Pre pretty much the only thing I remember about Kevin Mench is the size of his head. I don't know why, but that was something that would always come up in any broadcast I was listening to. Like, is that all they have on his media page? usually how I learn all these random facts and tidbits about the players is just from, you know, listening to the games and 
as a kid, I used to listen to every single Pirates game on the radio. Never had cable, but I would listen into all the games. Old Annie for Terry and Steve Blass and all of those old timers. All right, so we have eight boxes left before we conclude. Eight hanger boxes left. I wonder if these are going to spike in value because if you check out well obviously the um the ideal situation would be a 2011 tops update increase 2011 tops update hanger boxes are five hundred dollars a piece so this box five hundred dollars a piece for 2011 right now because of the trial hey we got another auto our second auto, it's Richard Lovelady, 1984 rookie card auto for our Royals owner. And the Royals were a pretty cheap buy-in. They were in the single digits. I forget how much they were. They might have been eight bucks. That goes to Robert. A hey, congratulations on your Richard Lovelady rookie card. Patrick says he's a nice guy. He's met him before. Let's get break FF put on the back of this one. Richard Lovelady. <laughs> he loves the ladies, I guess. Or at least someone in his lineage did to get that surname. wonder how that name comes about. Richard Lovelady. I'm sure he's gotten all kinds of comments about that name. Ben says, who? Yeah, Richard Lovelady. One of those guys that's a young player that we don't know too much about yet at all. Another home run, says Mike. For, who hit it? Mill 2K says, remember his name now. It'll be forgotten in three, two, one. Oh, there's no home run. Somebody said another home run, and I got excited there for a second. There's Aloy Jimenez, rainbow, Stan Musial, iconic card. Jacob DeGrom, vintage stock. Oscar Mercado, 84 rookie, Frankie Lindor. Yeah, Patrick, someone said another home run, so I thought somebody did also. Faked me out. Patrick says his TV is like two minutes slow. Dave Durango's here. What's up, man? Dave Durango having that big Halloween special tomorrow, don't forget. Let's get this pesky box opened up. Five boxes left after that. Mill 2K11 says, see you, Jabs. Have a great night. See you, chat. Enjoy your evening, Mill 2K11. Thank you very much for the support, man. Enjoy the rest of your night as well. Hopefully you enjoy the uh, rest of the what's left of the World Series. Hopefully it's a, an epic ending there, Game 7. I will be watching it along with you guys here after these five boxes. I'll fire up YouTube and try to find somebody streaming it. And um, I just want an exciting ending. Sounds like it's going to be a good one. What inning are we, are we in right now? The seventh? So there's still a few. This game probably won't be over till around midnight. But top eight, says Dave. Top eight. Well, the way that the uh, postseason is gone in terms of time of game, so that means we'll probably be done right around midnight. Especially because the Astros will have to hit in the ninth. Is Daniel Hudson going to get the save for the Nationals? Former Bucko, who is just kind of cast off. I don't even know how they ended up getting rid of him if they just didn't re-sign him or let him walk. But former Bucko, Daniel Hudson. It wasn't that great for us. Justice Sheffield Gold. Seems like he has a rookie card in every single series. 
I feel like Justice Sheffield has like 10 rookie cards throughout 2019 tops. Nats get another run, four to two. Uh-oh. Soto with an RBI. Well, Astros fans, things are looking a little bit grim. Garrett Cole's warming for you. That doesn't really matter too much right now if you don't have the lead. This will be interesting to see if the, uh, the Nats bullpen can hang on. That would be pretty epic if Steven Strasburg came out for the close. Like, what if Hudson gets in trouble and it's like bases loaded with like, I don't know, one out and Davey Martinez has no faith in anyone in that bullpen except for Doolittle and Hudson. What if he brings out Strasburg on zero days rest and puts him out there and Strasburg, I don't know, strikes, strikes him out for the win or whatever. That'd be epic. Bryce Harper, who's crying now? Yeah, Bryce Harper's never going to live this one down. That's going to follow him until he wins his own World Series. The Nationals offered him $300 million over, I feel like it was like $300 million 10 years or something like that, and he turned them down for more money. Ended up getting three hundred thirty dollars over 13 years, which might be a little bit less AAV. But it might be a while until... Uh, I don't know when Harper's going to get that shot, but I felt like that the Phillies were going to be there this year. We'll see if Girardi can get them back on track. Yeah, they de they definitely don't need him. They got Soto now. Juan Soto is the big star. Pat says it's not over yet. Don't count your tickets before the eggs break. Yeah, it's not over until that last out's in the books. That's for sure. We've seen a lot of times where teams have mounted incredible comebacks. Even, I know, three runs, they could walk it off. It's not a, not out of the unthinkable that could happen. What if we have another 1988-type Kirk Gibson walk-off or some bit? How about a Game 7 walk-off? We haven't had a Game 7 home run World Series walk-off since 1960. Bill Mazeroski, the only one. And we've got a shot in about 45 minutes or whatever it is, whenever that bottom of the ninth comes up. If someone hits it, I think it's going to be Bregman. Alex Bregman comes up and hits a three-run home run walk-off. That's going to be my prediction. I have to make that prediction because I picked the Astros to win it, so... I don't know where they're at in the batting order, but I'll say Bregman. There's a LeMahieu gold. Bill Mazeroski. Thorn in the, the uh, memories of Yankees fans. They, the Yankees were so much better than the Pirates in 1960. So much better, but that's baseball. Yankees won three games that series. Ended up just, I don't know. They outscored the Pirates in that series by probably like double digits, and they ended up losing... All the Pirates' wins were by, like, one run or one or two runs. All right, here's the final box of this hanger box break. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Really appreciate you folks tuning in up against the biggest game of the year, Game 7 of the World Series. It's the eighth inning right now, so we'll finish this one up, and then I will join most of you in watching... The final inning of the World Series. All right, so final box of the night we have. Let's get to the middle and see who's in here. Where are you at? Where are you at? There's a gold of Jose Iglesias. Luke Weaver, Ken Griffey Jr., 84. Lindor and Scherzer All-Star card and some base cards. So with that, thank you once again, everyone, for watching. I really appreciate that. Dave Durango with a reminder says, Halloween Horror Movie Stream tomorrow, 11 p.m. Eastern. So after your trick-or-treating and your Halloween parties, make sure you check out Dave Durango's stream there. I really appreciate all of you guys for being here. If you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And um, tomorrow we'll be live. I don't know. Maybe we won't be live. Maybe I'll do a standalone. I can't decide. Should I do Garbage Pail Kids as live? or standalone. 
I feel like I'm leaning towards standalone because I feel like everyone's going to be busy with trick-or-treating, so standalone might hold up better over the long run. But that break will be put up on Patreon sometime tomorrow. We'll do that by the stack. So thank you so much for watching, everybody. And they are original Garbage Pail Kids. I bought them at the, uh, at the card store or at the antique mall last week. Again, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your week. And uh, have fun watching the rest of the World Series. Good night, everybody. And Primant says, Happy Halloween. Almost hit the X and then I saw Primant's donation. Thank you very much, Primant. Make sure you guys check out Primant on your way out the door. Click on that super chat. Click go to the channel and check him out. Really appreciate the support, man. Now with that, have a great rest of your week. Have fun watching the rest of the World Series. And I will see you all tomorrow for the Garbage Pail Kids Halloween break. Good night, everybody.